Hey, Steve, before we get to the jersey that you're wearing, can we just throw out there that um, there was a big... Oh, this is a jersey. I guess you're right. Big moment from the Blue Room this week. Did you see? No. Well, I mean, you have the Blue Room, right? They they do with this at your house, do they not? Oh, you son of a... Blue Room presented by Rogers. I was like, what are you talking about? With the Toronto Maple Leafs? They had Joseph Wool playing the piano. Oh, wow. In the Blue Room. Wow, that's really... Wow, how'd they fit it in there? That's crazy that they did that in the Blue Room. Wow. The one that... Had to have got it into my house in Ajax. How did they get the idea for the Blue Room, I wonder? Man, I don't know. It's crazy. It's good for uh, them, though. Really creative. Good for them. Yeah. Stoked their... I'm not doing it. I'm not, I'm not, no, nope, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I am not making enemies. Steve is wearing his 2010 uh, Canada gold medal jersey uh, that he, I believe, you got that at from Nike at the time, did you not? I did. So I brought another jersey, it, but it's dirtier. It's, okay. It's the jersey I wore to the game. Okay. And I'm an idiot and like played street hockey in it and stuff. Dude, I was 21 when I got it. Like, just what a fucking idiot. I think that's okay because you also have this one. I also have this one. Well, Jesse, I did get in a little trouble. Okay. So I was uh, still in school and determined to be a professional. Um, uh, This is when Nike flew me to Calgary at the last minute in January, about a month before the Olympics began. Mm -hmm. So I can interview, uh, who was it? Jillian Apps. Jaina Hefford, Jennifer Botterill, all members of the Canadian women's team, and Jerome McGinley. And I was so friggin' sick, and I shouldn't have been there, but I was there. And Jerome was last. And he walks into the room, and it's the way Dave, uh, not Dave Chappelle, who is uh, Charlie Murphy, describes meeting Rick James okay, okay, on the Dave Chappelle show. There was just an aura around him i was just like oh oh my god that's jerome mcginla i interview him for way too long because that's how those interviews went and i knew i wasn't supposed to ask for autographs yeah but here's the thing other people in the room who were working got autographs and so i'm not stupid i'm gonna get an autograph right and so i got this jerome mcginla autograph on a team canada 2010 jersey right on the Right on the jersey. Right on the of... crest. Wow. Right on the Did crest. Did Jerome McGinley disrespect the crest, Jesse? I think so. <laughs> I think when you win a gold medal for Canada, you're allowed to put wow. a uh, autographed on the on the uh, on the flag there. That's pretty cool. Um, did you get a talking to about the autograph? I sure did. <laughs> uh, because I was I in my head, I was like, well, it's okay that it's signed, because like Jerome McGinley is a Nike athlete. Mm-hmm. I told this story, I think, in the book. It was, uh, you know, in between a, a couple of the zoo stories, um, where on the flight to, I believe this was Vancouver. Now, a month later, they talked about like trying not to mention athletes um, who were signed to other companies, non Nike athlete. Non. Well, they only had there was only one Nike athlete. Okay. But but we're talking about someone who was signed with Reebok, for example. Mm-hmm. And at the time, Sidney Crosby was a Reebok athlete. And I said verbatim, I swear to God, I said this. I go, what happens if Sidney Crosby scores the gold medal winning goal? Mm-hmm. And sure enough, he does. And I made a big deal out of how much Jerome McGinley set that play up. <laughs> so <laughs> you're you're talking Nike about athlete. mentioning because you're doing like videos for them for they were it was for Nike. It was a really, really, really strange experience because these videos were for Nike. Yes. Um, but you're also a reporter. For Nike sort. for like their website or their YouTube channel. Their YouTube channel. I oh, think okay. it was Nike Training. And which, I mean, look at me. Like, yeah. You know. So you're doing a recap of the game, and you're just focusing on Jerome again, because like, he's the only Nike athlete that was on the Olympic. Well, team? so it was just it was there was like a little bit of a directive to try to not mention guys who we knew were signed. Okay, so, but no, but guys, to other companies. Guys is there's one guy. There's one guy who was signed to Nike. No, like okay. So for example, um. Uh, uh, Rick Nash goes out there and scores a goal. I don't okay. know if he was signed with anyone else, 
but I would have to be like Rick Nash scored a goal. I'm like, if Sidney Crosby scores a goal, am I just not allowed to mention Sidney Crosby? And they're like, no, well, that's ridiculous. I'm like, well, no, that is a little bit what you told me, though. So, like, right, what's the right. line? So, so there's guys on the team that weren't signed to anybody? That's right. I, I'm that's shocked weird. that we got to 2010 in the history of the world based on Jesus that there are <laughs> athletes, professional athletes going to the Olympics that don't have an equipment sponsor? Hockey. Hockey, man. Yo, uh, still. No, no. Not equipment sponsor. Athletic wear. This is very different. Uh, there we go. There so we go. It's that's, not the helmet. That's, that's what I'm missing. That's right. Not there the helmet, go. not the skates, not the gloves. Okay. It's the actual Athletic underwear. Athletic wear. There we go. So let me get something straight. You weren't allowed to mention. No, well, I was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, here, I have. You might have said that three times. I know. Already. My bad. I have told this story before. Um, the best commercial I've ever seen. Ever, ever, ever in my entire life. Jerome McGinley, NyQuil. NyQuil. Yes. Oh, yeah, that was a good commercial. It was a good commercial. Sorry, yes. go, keep going. Um, Steven Stamkos making the 2010 Olympic team. It's the best commercial I've ever seen. Do you know why you've never seen it? Why? Steven Stamkos was not yeah. on the 2010 Olympic team. <laughs> he didn't play. He didn't play. He had an off chance of making it. They made a commercial in case mm -hmm. he made it, and he didn't. Because uh, we never saw it. That's, and, Stam, that's the thing about Stamkos' legacy is he never gets to play in the Olympics. Well, Whenever the Olympics happen, something's happened either in the world or to Stamkos. Yeah, Sochi, <laughs> he broke his leg. 2010, yeah. he 100% should have been on that team. Yeah, and they left him off. He 100% should have been on that team. He was one of the best scorers in the NHL that season. And then the next couple times they decide not to go. And then the next time they decide to go and there's a pandemic and they pull out. And now the next time they go, he might be too old. Like, there's... <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. How do you leave him off that team next time? Yeah. Well, because he's maybe not. The lightning there. might leave him off the lightning. Oh, my. Oh, shit. Yeah. Like. Wow. Wow. I didn't even think of that. So. But. Uh, oh, what a time. What a time. 14 years to the day. What's uh, what? Uh, what seat were you sitting in? Oh, well, I could tell you on the uh, ticket that I have in my room. It was in the 300s. So where the golden goal was scored, I was on that side of the ice like jerome again where he went down along the boards i was on that side of the ice on the opposite <laughs> that's what everybody side of, remembers oh yeah on the opposite side of the rink yeah jerome again oh, okay, on the other side okay. jerome again was the beginning middle and end of that <laughs> he was on the ice for i think the number was eight seconds before that goal was scored nice he swapped off for mike richards or swapped on for mike richards mm -hmm. uh after roberto luongo made a game saving save on joe pavelski because Scott Niedemeyer gave it away like an idiot. Uh, but Luongo made a save, and now his uh, Niedemeyer's legacy is safe. And we're going to show the footage so the Olympics uh, committee comes after our yeah. entire company. Yes. Because ba, 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 they are the ba, da, da. worst organization in the world when it comes to footage. Yes, they are. Ooh. They are. <laughs> they are. They, no, no, they, they are. are. That, is, are. that is a thing known worse in than FIFA. the sports industry. You cannot show Olympic footage at all. All unless they give you written permission. Well, the the, rights, other, yeah. the other thing I was going to do them. today is I have this little display that has my ticket in it and uh, uh, the story that was written about me on in the National Post. Because speaking of the Olympics and rights, the Globe and Mail was like the credentialed newspaper of the 2010 Olympics in Canada. So the National Post was looking for Olympic stories without Olympic access. Mm. So they're like, well, there's a 21 year old making YouTube videos for Nike. We could do that. That's a cool way to get around oh. it. Yeah. So they interviewed me, and I'm like, this, this is probably going to get cut. It's not even going to be in the paper. I wake up the next morning, page two. Oh, <laughs> that's sick. Wow. Good. Cover me. For, the, <laughs> the for anybody that grew up in the decade after that, page two used to be a big deal. <laughs> it used to be a very big deal. There that's is, sick. It's a big deal. It, it, uh, it's just the thing is that it's not really that big of a deal anymore. What did it's, Tina say? My mom? Clementina. When she saw you on page two of the it was National Post, you said? Uh, she was very proud, um, but you actually just reminded me of another story that was actually told the other day. <laughs> oh, man, I can't wait. <laughs> Yeah, Can we get another story. Can what? We? Oh, so first off, what well, you need to know. Here, let's start the like, Adam Wild podcast. Adam, what you need like to know. No, no. Here, let's go. Here's the Adam Wild podcast. The Olympic stories. Athletes that weren't signed to Nike. It's oh, really important, you know. That. Oh gosh. <laughs> here, Adam Wild podcast. Man, would you have grandkids? 
the story. Adam, what oh. do you want to talk <laughs> It'll be about? The best. Huh? It'll be the best. Huh? Adam, you got any radio oh. stories? <laughs> no, nobody cares How's about Marilyn? Everly's going to be <laughs> like, what's going on? Yeah. Uncle Steve, do you, do you have any stories? It'll be like, yes, it's funny you asked that. And then Adam will be like, no, <laughs> and knock out my dentures. <laughs> Dang. I hope we're at the same retirement home. That's all I hope. You listen to me, Adam. <laughs> we'll be like, this. no, we got to get like a corner in Florida. Oh, I love you know, that. like live on like a golf, uh, a golf course. I love that. Somewhere, I mean, ride around the golf carts all day. Go to lunch at like 9 a.m. Oh. Dinner at three. Oh, buddy. The happy hour <laughs> specials. Yeah. It's going to be beautiful. I'm in, Jesse. Let's, Let's do, it. do it. We should get we Pina should get the best I miss producer Drew. He was eaten by an alligator on the eighth <laughs> hole. <laughs> alligator uh, was a Leaf fan. Yeah. Anyway, what uh, what did you want to say? I'm just kidding. It was my dad's birthday the other day. Oh, okay. And you ever walk into a room and a story is being told about you? Yes. Okay. Yeah, if your parents are somewhere and they're talking, it's usually they're spilling secrets yeah. about you. My yeah. parents were never telling good stories. No. I'll throw that out there. <laughs> So I walked in the room and it turns out my mom is still holding a grudge for something I did uh, before I went on my first, or no, sorry, after I went on my first flight, which was just prior to the Olympics. So in order for Nike to send me to the Olympics, this 21 year old who doesn't know shit about fuck uh, to the Olympics, I had to go to the uh, 2009 World Juniors, no, 2010 World Juniors, sorry, mm -hmm. in Saskatchewan. Uh, so it was the first time I'd ever been on a plane. I went to the team Canada announcement in Regina. I sat next to this guy on the plane who, um, reminded me of Brent, Butt from corner gas. Oh yeah. <laughs> and I don't that's know a, if that's a, that's a good reference. Good yeah. pull. <laughs> and I don't know if you've ever, um, been to the Regina airport. It's about the size of this room. Oh yeah. And I went to the Saskatoon one. It's about the same. Yeah. And oh, even Saskatoon is bigger than the, the Regina was an experience. So I get there. I'm waiting I'm for my bag. Murder if you, you murder you if you spent I like get there. Oh, don't worry. I have another story after that. I can't wait. I, 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 I get there. I have um I have I remember uh, I had my bag. Chicken. I have my bag. Chicken. It's weird. I, don't <laughs> I have my bag that I'm waiting for and Brent Butt comes up to me not brent butt not actually brent butt just a guy the some guy who worked in regina and his wife was picking him up from the airport and he goes where's your hotel i go it's this whatever it was he goes do you want me, you want us to drive you there and oh, i go shit. okay and so this stranger and his wife picked me up and drove me to a hotel but instead of drugging me and taking my kidneys they just gave me a tour of regina Mm -hmm. Where they're like, oh, people think uh, New York City and uh, Central Park is the largest inner city park in North America. It's actually this one right here on your oh. right. And yeah, they gave me a tour, but I called my mom during the process yeah. and she was upset. As she should be. Mm -hmm. You're, you said 21? 21. And old enough said, to know better. <laughs> and you said, hey, random people at the airport. Yes, I will get in your car. That's not a good idea. That's at all. not what I said. They offered. <laughs> It's different if they offer. It's, please, no, it's not. Yeah. Anyway, they are kind out there. Adam, you want to hear another one? No, I, mean, <laughs> I can tell you some more. You have to understand. You have to understand. I have heard every one of these stories, but I'm yeah? glad you do bring them out because not everybody has. No. And I think it's a nice, that is a nice sort of microcosm of how great people are in Saskatchewan. It sure uh, is. Because they're not, they're not. Um, oh, man. You want to hear another one about how great they the are? big city experience. See, they help is, each other out. How is the KHL? Oh man, man! Oh, please God, you know what? <laughs> oh, God. It was less no. stable than my time at the zoo. I'll tell you that. There you go. Which so we got to go back to 2005. Okay, no, we don't. We don't. Why? Why not? We don't. we don't. Why not? Well, actually, 2004 was the first time I applied to the zoo. I didn't get in, but yeah, sorry. Uh, we began last night with a compliment from Bruce Cassidy. Did you see this? Yes. No, but it sounds boring. So Bruce Cassidy said <laughs> that what Toronto was doing, splitting up Neilander Tavares. Um, is something that Vegas did to win the cup. He said, eventually, he's like, I don't know if you if mismatches mismatch is the right, right word, but an advantage will go to you if you're able to consistently do it. I think it helped us a lot late last year and into the playoffs. I like that thinking myself. Players have to be on board. I think it's going to help Toronto, and it looks like it has recently. We will see over time. One thing I kept saying the entire uh, spring last year when they got Ryan O'Reilly is that the original ethos of this stupid team was, was Matthews, Tavares, Kadri. 
You're supposed to have this incredible three-headed monster that you can't match because there's three great centers. And then they went and got Ryan O'Reilly, and then it was kind of supposed to work like that, and then it never really worked out like that. But splitting them up and now having Max Domi and Nylander on a line, it just makes sense. And it's it's so frustrating that it takes so long to get here, but I'm very happy that we're here and that Tavares is okay on the third line. And that Tavares' line looks great when Tavares isn't kind of injured or sick or something. Yeah, he probably <laughs> shouldn't be playing right now. Is he sick or injured? Uh, Injured. Okay. Yeah, he's got something going on. But when they're all going and they're at full strength and it looks great to like during the seven game winning streak, it's fabulous. Like the Leafs look incredible right now. I, I got to say, though, Bruce Cassidy, one of the best coaches in the NHL. And here's here's how I know the Leafs, uh, I think, have a one and a hundred and fifty record when the coach of the other team compliments them. I know, it's yeah, terrible. Because they know going into the game that we're probably going to win this one. I'm going to say something nice so we can beat them up. Yeah. Hey, dude, <laughs> dude. It's like John Cooper did that all the time. Oh, when they John come Cooper. To Toronto and just, oh, just you can tell that guy's a lawyer. Oh, you can yeah. tell he's a lawyer. Oh, yeah. He, he, he has like Southern lawyer charm, too. Oh, oh my yeah. God. Uh, yeah, <laughs> with a just, smile. You yeah. just want to stuff him into a locker every yeah, time. Yeah. Every time he says something, the nicer the compliment, the yeah. more you hate him. See, yeah. Sheldon's like a bull, right? Like maybe is, too much so he he That's doesn't he doesn't shimmy thing. side to side like John Cooper and Brett, Bruce Cassidy he goes I'm going straight and if there's a wall I'm going through it mm-hmm. yeah and no he, he the said, more the more nice that Cooper is about a team the more confident I'm sure that the Lightning are gonna win mm-hmm. you know because when oh, when yeah. he doesn't compliment you that means he knows there's a chance you're gonna win yep you know so yeah. when when his team gets destroyed too he'll he'll make some sort of <laughs> comment about well I mean we really. Uh, you know, they haven't really seen our best or something like that. Every sentence starts with, well, we're the better team. So <laughs> here's what happened right. tonight to make that not so. Right. I'm sure that would be year after year for a player annoying to deal with, but also in the playoffs, there's nobody I want in front of a microphone more than John Cooper. He's been there 12 years. Yeah. 12. That's a crazy run. 12 years, four Stanley Cup finals. How do you argue with it? And I'm pretty sure immediately coming off a Calder Cup. You know, it's funny when they always do the best coaches ranking. I always wonder if they just do like best coaches we think will be available in the next few years because John Cooper's never on it. Right. You know, like it's like Rod Brandenburg. Not that Carolina's going to fire Rod Brandenburg, but you know what I mean? It's like Rod Brandenburg and Torts sometimes makes it. And there's other. Um, who's the other guy uh, um, that really surprised me that might coach the American team? Uh, well, Mike Sullivan. Oh, Mike Sullivan. Um, well, you know, wasn't those, those names are always out there. John Cooper's name is like never on it. And I'm always like, you know, there's a pretty good resume there. And I think sometimes it's hit ever, by the talent he has. He doesn't why, care. Why would you fire him? Why would you ever fire him? There's exactly. There's no evidence to suggest that's the thing to do. So here are some of the events from last night. I'm not going to go through it by like chronological order. On the second goal, was that a high stick from Petrangelo or am I seeing things? No, uh, no. Was keeping that close. puck in? No, yeah, I thought right. that was the fourth one. Oh, was that the fourth? Yeah. It was the... No, I'm talking about the second one. Hmm? Yeah, I'm talking about the second okay, one. Okay, well, there was I a, think we're talking line. about the same goal. And uh, I'm confused as to why that wasn't challenged. Um, I am too. The fourth goal, I'm, I'm with you on. But I'm talking about the second goal. There was a play that Petrangelo made to keep the puck in the zone. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, we're thinking of the same goal. I'm telling you it was the second goal. Oh, Has to be maybe it was. Goal. No, the second goal was Morelli. Okay, well, it doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. Is it a high stick? I thought so. Jesse, you don't think so? Um, no, the Leafs um, video review staff is the best in the biz. And if it was something that they could challenge and take back, they would have done it. Bertuzzi, I, think, Bertuzzi, I think it was too close, and I think it was it was good. Bertuzzi gets another goal. We're happy about that. Italian for regression. <laughs> Let's he's, go. Man, he's <laughs> unreal. Unreal. Uh, I love him. Riley Brody, negative four in the game, guys. Oh, wow. Every goal. They were on the ice against. Dude, um, you know what? Sorry, I think the first four they were on the ice for. It's it's okay. It's okay because that's it. That's it. Mm. Like, listen, you lose after a seven-game win streak. It does hit a little different. Hits a little softer. And you see a pairing perform, a pairing that you already don't like, perform so cataclysmically. That's it. It's over. It's done. You don't do it ever again. You don't need to. Hey, sometimes you try things to find out an answer. Ah, there it is. You got a definitive answer. All caps, three exclamation marks. You don't need to do it ever again. But what about, uh-uh, you have better options. 
What are the other, what are the better options? Anything else? Absolutely anything else. Don't ever try that again. It's done. Now it used to work. That's the thing. <laughs> Doesn't yeah. anymore. It did used to so work. So did my Ford Taurus. Like two years ago. It's, it it's been in the scrapyard for many years. Right. Nope. Done. Now, uh, the other thing is that without Riley in the lineup, there was a huge argument, and I think uh, backed up by evidence. It's crazy evidence that the Stupid. Leafs learned to play a little team defense and the defense learned to play a little team defense. And with Riley in the lineup, the high danger chances against go up. Uh, that and was that a is, wild stat and, from TSN. Good pull. And I'm just questioning something here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've known for years that Riley's not the best on defense. Mm -hmm. We've known that for years. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Why is it that, you know, I know Timothy Lilligren's injured. Get yes. that completely. Yes. Um, uh, and hopefully that's just a maintenance thing. It's not like a long-term thing. I don't think it is a long-term thing. Why is it that we don't manage Morgan Riley's minutes differently? The 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 Riley Brody where Barbashev is is far far away from them. Yeah. And I I saw Riley's pre post game on it where he's talking about uh, oh we just didn't think he'd get that far away. It's like well you didn't look, man. And I and I love Morgan Riley, but I think it's I think it's a fair question to ask. Uh, have the Leafs deployed Morgan Riley in ways that he can be successful? Now that we have two definitive pairings that work, and you said it in your video, Morgan Riley plus guy mm -hmm. stopgap until the defense the the right handed defenseman shows up. Are we? Is this crazy? Uh, they. The Leafs have deployed Morgan Riley properly. He, he's he was drafted in 2012. Mm -hmm. They've deployed deployed him properly for three months. Last year, when they got Luke Shen, who have his D partners been his entire career? Matt Hunwick, mm -hmm. Ron Hainsey. So we got lefty lefty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why do they keep punishing this poor kid? I think for a, t a brief period there was Dion Phaneuf. Stop it. Why are you, what are you doing to this poor kid? I think Riley was, he might've been on the right of Phaneuf at times. Who are the righties Riley has ever played with? I don't think there's been many. Cody CC. Oh, yep. Who those two were, they were terrible. Together. Glue gun, duct tape, k -k 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 -k, nail gun. You couldn't, Babcock was like, nope, this is it. This is extremely my shit. And he kept them together forever. I think he was with Tyson Berry for four minutes. Mm -hmm. Not that it, he ever really should have been. Mm -hmm. I mean, enough time has passed that we can pretty humbly admit that trade sucked. And um, who's he ever played with, dude? Who's he ever played with that's made sense? Luke Shen, Luke Shen, Luke Shen. What's frustrating about that? Like is even Luke Shen costs less than John Klingberg. <laughs> more years, <laughs> more years, more years. But yeah, and obviously he's had Brody, and they did look all right for a time. And even when they weren't good defensively, they would outscore their problems, which is the whole name of the game. If you allow eight goals every game, it's actually okay as long as you average nine. Mm -hmm. um, they <laughs> uh, they can't do it anymore. We know what the solution is. Like, listen, it's never just stared you in the face as hard as this, right? They were on a seven game tear, five of it without Riley. He comes back. They keep winning mm -hmm. against some pretty good opponents. Mm -hmm. Lilligren, Brody, bam, doing great. Benoit, McCabe, bam, doing great. Riley, guy. Do we like the first line? Yep. Do we like the second line? Yep. Third line? Yep. Fourth line? I don't Great. know what wizard's potion Sheldon Keefe gave <laughs> them, but I guess it's called Pontus Holmberg Itis. I, yeah. Uh, it's Riley. Get him a partner. Get him a partner who, wait, what? Uh, uh, oh, he shoots right handed. Look at that. Give him that. That's it. Dude, they could go out and get Ilya Labushkin. It would be an upgrade on what they have. Like I'm, I'm dead serious, and I'm not. I think they had Labushkin with him for a little bit. Did that work? Not really, but it would still like literally get a living, breathing human being shoots right, capable of skating at an NHL. Dude, 
Is there a forward on the Marlies who shoots right, who you can put on the... Make him shoot right! Ah! That's it! Stop it! Stop the madness! That's it. That's my only major piece of feedback with this lineup. Would I tinker here and there and do... Yes, yeah. But you can only ask Santa for one thing. I've been such a good boy. <laughs> Dude, give me this one thing. One thing. You're not even asking for a third line center anymore. Like, you, you know, you ever ask Santa for something too expensive? Yeah. <laughs> I asked Santa for stuff that was too expensive. Yep. I want Rasmus Anderson, Santa. Ooh, what else you want? <laughs> uh, okay, Santa. What about like Chris Tanev? Santa might be able to make that happen. Yeah, if Chris Tanev <laughs> doesn't go to, if Santa doesn't drop Chris Tanev off in Dallas, apparently. Oh. By the way, nobody has offered a first round pick for Chris Tanev. If they had, he would have moved. Well, there you go. Also, Which makes a, a lot of sense. Sure does. Uh, Matt Dumba. Was Matt Dumba somebody? Ooh, don't love it, but... Why not? You know what? Santa's on a tight budget this year. Dumba Riley? Dumba Riley? UFA? It does roll off the tongue. Dumba Riley. Dumba Riley. Riley Dumba. You guys want to solve a little issue? I do. 4-1 mm. goal uh, was the goal where Petro uh, kept the puck in. There was something on the second goal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, there was something Once else. again, Adam, you're wrong. Woo! Uh, Morelli. <laughs> no, that wasn't the Tavares one. That was the third goal. What happened on the Morelli goal? I can't remember. Doesn't matter. Too many goals. Uh, That's never a good sign. If there's one thing I know about us, it's that nobody ever stays up too late yelling at the TV. Never. <laughs> never not once. You know, and and but if if we were to. What? And we needed a hydrating, refreshing morning. That could kind of snap us back into place. Liquid IV might be the thing. Liquid yeah. IV. Yeah. For, you know, as someone who's never stayed up too late, gone too hard. Steven, what do you like about liquid IV? It tastes really good. Yeah. But, you know, there are other products out there that are like, guess what? We taste good. But nothing makes me feel as good as liquid IV. It's like a power up. Mm -hmm. You ever drink water and drink water? Dude, drinking water feels like a job that I get paid very poorly for. And liquid IV kind of accelerates the process and it makes me feel great. Jesse, yeah. when you're at a bar or a club or a movie theater and you're not <laughs> hydrating, what yeah. can happen to your body? Uh, it could break down. <laughs> and explode. <laughs> Doctors said they explode. I don't, liquid I don't IV it. doesn't make any promises that your body won't explode, but it yeah. does It does hydrate you. You like it. Oh, yeah. I So I have it like after a workout, mm -hmm. but a lot of people on Liquid IV says you can have it before the workout and it'll like make you better throughout it. So I have to experiment with this thing and see if it's better or before or after i'm very excited well it Jesse, has three times the electrolytes of a leading sports drink and eight vitamins as the health nut on the show you should drink during <laughs> yeah <laughs> during oh yeah the yeah. third option if sure. yeah, yeah jesse all this could be yours okay <laughs> what you what you if, wait the thing you're packing i'm just pointing at the bod <laughs> all, right, all this could be yours it is non-gmo and free from gluten dairy or soy for daily use before workout when you feel run down before after a long night out and on long flights. And Jesse, you say you, it works after too, so who knows? Yeah. Listen, if you want to try it out, uh, you can grab Liquid IV Hydration Multiplier sugar-free in bulk nationwide at Costco or get 20% off your first order when you go to liquidiv.com and use that promo code, it's Dangle. How do you spell it? D-A-N-G-L-E. That's 20% off your first order when you order Shop Superior Hydration today with Dangle at liquidiv.com. Remember that promo code, it's Dangle. So listen, the Good Deeds Cup is on right now, and the Chevrolet's Good Deeds Cup is in its eighth season and empowers Canadian minor hockey teams to make a meaningful impact on their communities by doing as many good deeds as possible. I'm going to I'm gonna give you a for instance of how this all kind of runs down. The 2022 winner from Lloydminster, Alberta, because uh, there's a Lloydminster, Saskatchewan as well. It's mm -hmm. important oh. to mention that there's Lloydminster, Alberta. Uh, it was the female U13 Blazers that created better accessibility at their new local rink by allowing more community members to access the ice. Wow. In 2021, the winner were the Victoria Admirals, supported by the Children's Health Foundation of Vancouver Island to help more children with mental and physical challenges achieve their goals in sports with specialized equipment. And basically, if I'm, you're involved... I'm a big Victoria Admirals guy. Oh, yeah? A great second line. There you go. Yeah. 
you got to record your good deeds. Post them to TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, or X using the hashtag Good Deeds Cup and hashtag content. And remember, excuse me, not content, contest. Uh, and remember to tag Chevrolet Canada and hashtag your team's name. Every eligible good deed that you, your family, or your community uh, submits on your behalf will be added to your social total and your team's collective score for the Good Deeds Cup leaderboard. It's $100,000 to a registered Canadian charity of the team's choice and title of Chevrolet Good Deeds Cup champion. So it's great. The, the, what the thing I love about this is that like, if your family's like, I really, I really want them to win, they yeah. can help you win. They can do a bunch of good deeds on your As they should. Behalf. Yes. That's what family's for. Exactly. And Winning the theme, cups. The theme of those winners, it's not just uh, a good deed. There are lots of good deeds. Inclusion. Ah, Getting people involved. I yep. like that. I like that. Important. Visit ChevroletGoodDeedsCup.ca to learn more. Um, <laughs> Leafs don't really get traction throughout this game. Like it, it just never felt like a game where they grabbed the play. Um, yeah, the late, the late penalty though on like I didn't think it was bad. It was just a loss. The late penalty on Marner leads to Sheldon Keith getting kicked out. Now the late penalty on Marner does the reason people were booing it. It is a penalty. But the reason people were booing it is that this part of the year is where the refs start to go, we're going to do less. Dude. And that is, that's an early season penalty. That's probably not a late season penalty. I guess we're mid season. It's a 50, 50 call. And do you ever notice that as the season progresses, there are more and more and more 50, 50 calls and the playoffs are basically exclusively 50, 50 calls in that the ref, <clears throat> I mean, every are you watching playoff hockey? Great. It's an infraction. E everything is an infraction in the playoffs. It's up to the discretion of the ref. The more and more discretion of the officials comes into play, the less and less you want a coach that the refs frigging hate. And you're not, you're just not going to get the right side of the 50-50 with Sheldon Keefe as your head coach behaving this way. Mm -hmm. It's he's been doing the same thing for years and years. And I know he's echoing Leaf fans. And I, I know like Sheldon Keefe is stealing my bit. He's yelling and screaming because the Leafs are doing poorly and fans latch onto that. And they go, that's awesome because they feel the catharsis. That's gimmick infringement, Sheldon. That's supposed to be my thing. But the difference is I'm some YouTuber. He's the head coach and he has to deal with these guys and they very obviously hate his guts. Part of part of the game of hockey, unfortunately, at the NHL level is being friends with the referees. That's that's a part of getting the benefit of the doubt is do they like you? Do they think when you yell and scream that you're correct? Mm -hmm. Are you mostly correct? Do you berate them mid play on national television? All of that stuff, unfortunately, is a factor when it comes to NHL refereeing. And in a case where it looked like from the angle where the referee's standing, Mitch Marner tripped him. I don't like the call. Okay. I understand why he yeah. made that call. It's it's bad. It's a bad angle. I, I don't even think the, the guy right here makes the call. I think it's the one who's up at the blue line. It looks like he trips him. But regardless of that, Sheldon Keefe is actively hurting the Toronto Maple Leafs every single time yes. he yells at an official like this because yes. they're going to say every single time there's these 50-50 calls, we're not giving you the benefit of the doubt. And he needs to learn that you need to play the game if you want to win games. Willie was telling him to chill. Yeah, when William Nylander has to be the guy to tell you to chill out, you know you're in the wrong. And it wasn't he's not going to speak up for anything. It wasn't that he screamed at him. Every every because Mike coach. Johnson even said that he was like he he was right in between the benches. He was yeah. like he he was pretty no, calm. The moment that got Keith really in trouble was when the referee told him enough, and then enough. and then he enough. kept going after after I think it was, I don't know if it was a TV timeout or just a timeout on the ice. They had a new puck drop or whatever. Keith went back at him. Mm. Once the ref tells you enough, the dude's your daddy. Like when you're playing the game, yeah. The ref's got to be your dad. You got to listen when you're when you tell Everly enough. She's got to listen, or there's gonna be consequences. Bet your ass. <laughs> you bet your ass. <laughs> Sheldon like Keith. Like children. Yes. I don't know the, who was the referee that night, but when he tells you enough, it's it right. gotta be enough. You can't keep poking the bear. Because there's going to be consequences. You're going to cost your team fucking power plays and penalties. Well, awful. I, I always talk about how refs are oversensitive babies. And there are a lot of 
situations where that's true and we see it across other sports like maybe hockey doesn't have it so bad man the more i watch baseball the more i <laughs> want robot i'm so they're bad. coming they're coming oh my god yeah, yeah. thank god so but darren drager <laughs> said that refs around the league were smiling because keith got thrown out yeah yeah but that's how it dude, works he you can't keep doing that and so sorry the the point i was trying to make refs are sensitive babies whatever whatever but the very non-sensitive thing that they do um is they'll make a call they'll go to the bench and all right here is your allotted time to yell at me referees are like, we don't give them credit for being good at taking abuse yes because they yes, do true. take they don't only take abuse from head coaches they take abuse from the players all day long yes the players can yell and scream on the way the penalty box and everything but once they tell you like okay you've you've yelled enough uh, uh profanities at me like let's let's chill a little then you better chill yeah because they'll take it for a little bit i'm gonna go to the bench you have 20 to 30 seconds to just call me every name in the book. And Sheldon <laughs> Keefe got everything he wanted out. He did it. He got and his, then he kept going. He got his money's worth and then he got more than his money's now worth. He's gonna, now it's going to cost him $25,000. You think so? Hold on. You guys 100%. think he's going to be suspended? Um, or sorry, not suspended. Not, you think fine. he's going to be fined? He didn't say anything after the game. Yeah, because he knows he's getting fined. I'm, yeah. I'm willing to bet someone was like, Sheldon, you're getting fined. I think an ejection in the NHL comes with a fine. Does it? And... I said this. Not no. I don't mean like it. Literally does. I think oh. when the NHL looks at it, saying you did so much to get ejected, we're gonna also find you. Adam, let me ask you something, and I promise this is related. What's the meal you're most excited for whenever it happens? Oh man, I love a I love a good ribs. I love some steak. I That's love good. wings. Mm. You, know, you, like you got that. some sashimi downstairs. I do have some sashimi <laughs> downstairs. I'm really pumped about that. And when you sit down for your favorite meal, Adam doing? ordered some 10 a.m. sushi. Yeah, I know. I was He's a legend for that. I was hungry. <laughs> like, and I wanted I wanted the protein, baby. What do, what do you do? You tuck the napkin in your shirt. Sure. And you sit down, knife and fork, like a Bugs Bunny cartoon, and you go, mmm, mmm, mmm. Can't wait for this. Yum, 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 yum. That's NHL head office getting a chance to fire Sheldon, or not fire Sheldon, uh, fine Sheldon Keefe today. So do you think then that... No, no. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm mm. sorry. You know why? Why? Not just because of his history, because he's been fine before, his history and consistent abuse of officials. And high sticking. Yes. And high no sticking history. and history. No, and history, yeah. And of course, it's, well, yeah. There's, <laughs> oh, Jesse, there's always history. I thought it was appropriate. Oh, so they're getting him back. Oh, for the Morgan the Riley. They moment. couldn't find him for that. I'm sure they looked into it. I bet they thought about it. Morgan Riley cross checks a player in the face. Hey, Sheldon, what do you think? I thought it was appropriate. And did you notice in the appeal ruling? They mentioned it. They mentioned it. Mm -hmm. And Morgan Riley, who's one of the Leafs' leaders, he's the assistant captain. And depending on who you ask, he's their captain, the mm -hmm. people's captain. You know what I mean? He's one of the leaders on the Leafs. Disavowed his head coach to the commissioner of the NHL in a published statement. Just to give you an idea of how hot under the collar the league was about those comments from Sheldon Keefe. Everyone's saying 25000 I've had a chance to sleep on it. It's his second fine and they hate his guts. It might be more. And I don't know. Are they allowed to do that? Whatever what? Actually, I they, think they can are. legally do, What's the they maximum, will do to this man. Maximum allowable under the CBA. Does, well, it, he's not in the CBA because he's uh he'd be in the coaches. Uh, CBA, yeah, he right? should put he should put a skate and uh, gloves on. And uh, oh no, I'm a player. Oh, never mind. <laughs> five. Th then we're gonna dock your fine down uh, to a fifth. Mm -hmm. Friggin' ridiculous. He's they're gonna throw the book directly between his eyes. Okay. I guess we'll see. Are you not convinced? No. No. Not really. You think he'll, I'm sure he'll he gets, start? I'm sure he gets 25 if, if he's going to get fined at all. I thought we would have heard something by now. Mm. Right? That's fair. That That's why. It's like 12.06. Usually it comes recording. like morning after. Yeah. Especially when they're trying to send a message. I bet. Yeah. By when they're the trying to hide time. something, it's 4 o'clock on a Friday. Right? Yeah, yeah. This should be a pretty cut and dry thing. Like we should know that he's fine by now. Mm -hmm. So the Don't, longer this takes, the more I'm like... Oh, now, they, they are they are scraping every page of every book to be like, what else can we ding this guy for? If you are, if you're Leafs management, hmm. I mean, there's nothing you could do 
about uh, Sheldon's reputation around the league. He's not going to fix that before the playoffs. You're not going to change who he is. No, <laughs> no. But you're also like you can't. He can't all of a sudden get warm and fuzzy with the refs. Yeah. I know who I want to talk to. Uh, okay. What, what, what point? Go, 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 ahead, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. 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 Your turn. <laughs> If you're if you're Shanny, if you're Brad for living, do you not go to him and say, "Hey, you remember what happened with Michael Bunting last year, don't you?" Uh, not those two. Shanahan definitely not. Mirko Bibich, CEO of Bell, yes, and Tony Staffieri, CEO of Rogers. Listen, oh, okay. our stock prices are riding on this, Sheldon. Uh, Larry seems too nice. You, he does seem too nice. Nope, not Brennan. Brennan's been there the whole time. Mm -hmm. Uh, he Sheldon's not going to listen to anything Brendan's already told him. Okay. Brad? Oh, they had a 17-hour meeting before the season began. You know who needs to talk to Sheldon Keefe? He was a captain in the NHL. And fans of the team that he played for always clutch their pearls whenever you tell them about his reputation outside of their fan base. Mm. This player used to get away with friggin' murder. I want someone in Leaf Management by the name of Shane Doan to go down there. Yep. Oh, I like that. And tell Sheldon Keefe in the politest, calmest way he can, calm the hell down. Here's how you do it. If there's anyone, like we always talk about, um, like the Leafs' uh, relationship with the refs. And it's something that I think they're actively trying to fix. And I think they've made inroads and Keith keeps friggin' erasing it and canceling it out. Shane Doan ran a muck for two decades in the NHL. His just chicken winning, uh, winging the hell out of everybody. And it was like him and Dustin Brown had a competition which captain can get away with more for longer mm -hmm. he's got to go down there and be the one to be like here's how it works in the show listen i know you've been a coach here for a little while and you had your cup of coffee playing here's what it's actually like i'm not convinced that you can change sheldon keith to like you said out and make him warm and fuzzy but i'm convinced you can tell him to dial it back a little and just like chill. And that I don't care who it comes from. I think somebody who can tell him, hey, this isn't how you can go about your business from now on. I think he'll listen. Sheldon Keefe reminds me of the football players from Super Mario. You know, you know the Super Mario players that you can't <laughs> jump on their head? Jump on their head and you just bounce off. But if, but they'll run through you. You know what I'm talking, talking oh. about? Like he's just... There is... It's like I go left or I go right or I go straight. But I don't do... I don't do the shimmy. I, I just go <laughs> bang. Bam, bam, almost <laughs> essentially, and I and I just don't know. Can you? Hmm. And 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 you know what? I think it's a question too. Is it? Because I, I'll be honest with you, I'm among the minority of Leaf fans who kind of liked that he got kicked out last night. Because I did feel a little oh. bit fuck you about it. Oh, and and uh, I believe me, and and we see it in the MLB all the time. I know it's a different sport. But we see it all the time in the MLB. Mm -hmm. Oh, here comes the... And, and a lot of times it's staged. Like, here comes the manager. And the manager's like, hey. And the, and the ump's like, get out of here. Yeah. Oh, the manager I doesn't just, say anything. But I in just, baseball, there's no consequences for it. You know calls aren't going to start going against you if you do that. If you give a, an umpire a piece of your mind, you know? You're not going to start getting less balls and strikes. The, the strike zone's going to be what it is. You got to call guys safer out and everything. But in the NHL... There's all these 50-50 calls that they might just not give you. Right. <laughs> right. Like and, and MLB, so, I'm like, listen, the, the dude who's uh umping your son's softball game or whatever, like it's different. Oh no, we're talking about professionals, yeah. not yeah. parents. Why, we're, I want to make that distinction. No, MLB <laughs> why umpires are we I just, distinction? Because, I don't know why because I'm about to friggin' say Okay, sorry. MLB umpires, I just don't respect these people. Like you're okay. you're garbage at your job. <laughs> you're garbage at your job. Don't and you need to go that. away. One guy. You know, that's I hope. Not nice. Listen. I hope everyone unionizes and gets their rights and gets increased pay and has workers' protection, except for those guys. Uh, uh, those guys stink. Uh, here's what I want to say. And Steve brought this up in the video last night. Toronto's league rank uh, in power play time by season. Now you got to remember, Toronto's always had a top tier power play, mm -hmm. but this is kind of nuts. So 16, 17. Adam, Adam, did you want to expand on you like that he got thrown oh, out? Because I don't think you got yeah, thrown out. No, I think you should. I, yeah. I liked it because um, 
I I do feel, and I'll I'll, I'll, I'll illustrate it later with the Kevin Papetti stat. Um, that I, I do feel like Toronto is its own animal. Um, I do think it's treated that way. Uh, I do think that there are calls that that I'm like, okay, that in that game is the exact same as what happened here. Like, all you have to do, you don't even have to do something recent. Do yourself a favor as a fan. Go back and look at Nazem Kadri's suspensions in the playoffs. Explain it to me like I'm five. I still haven't gotten an answer. And then go look at all the other egregious shit. Pick a player. Jamie Benn has done. Nick Cousins. Nick Cousins. Sam Bennett. Any, uh, uh, it's, it's, like, it's cra- like, here's how crazy it is. Brad Marchand licked a guy. Twice! Twice on the Toronto Maple Leafs. And all he got was a reprimand from his own management group. From his team who were like, hey, Brad, Brad wanna- don't do that. Lol. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I put my hand on the wrong side. Lol. Like, like, and, Lol. and by the way, uh, I, I completely understand that Toronto is its own thing. I completely understand that. I get it. It's treated differently. It is like, you can't tell me it's not. Uh, so for Sheldon Keefe to kind of get booted out of the game for that, it was a soft call on Marner. I really, I really like that, that somebody within the organization has the kind of passion to say F you. However, the other side of that, cause that's the caveman side of me. And I fully admit that I have that. I know that fights aren't good for people. It doesn't mean I don't like watching them. Oh, you're telling me I don't have a... a dude, a little caveman part of me was like, good. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. That's what I felt, felt too. And I know that that is not... It's like when you lose your temper. Mm-hmm. In, fact, in fact, it's exactly like what happens when you that's, lose your temper. No, that's quite exactly. In good. the moment, you're like, boy, that feels good. And afterwards, you're like, boy, do I regret that. Mm-hmm. And, and so I wonder if Nylander is telling him to calm down. And Nylander is the calmest of the calm. I do wonder if that can affect leadership. Coaches are leaders. And so as much as I really liked it, I still have the ability to say, it might not have been the great, greatest idea. And I think that's, that's I'm split on it. I really am. I, but I did like it. I'm not going to lie. I, Tavares showed some emotion last night. Which is nice. Yeah. For God's sakes. Yeah. I know that's not his thing. He's not an emotional guy. Yeah. I saw that and I was like, okay, they're going to have a banger of a third. Or, and we got or Mm -hmm. instead. Um, Like, listen, get angry. Lose your temper in a way that's productive. And I don't think Sheldon Keefe is being productive right now. He's hurting the chance of the Leafs winning games every time he does that stuff. That's... Listen, you can be mad about the call. If I was there, I would have yelled and booed. I was yelling at my TV last night. But the reality is, so they lose that game. They have another game tomorrow. If you want to increase your odds Mm -hmm. of winning that game tomorrow and going forward, knock it off. You have to. Um, So uh, we're looking at... uh, Toronto's league rank in power play time by season. Now you got to remember, this is wild. For a good chunk of this, Toronto's had one of the best or better power plays in the in the league. There are a couple mm-hmm. of years where they're top five, top three. Mm-hmm. Um, however, the dichotomy between them having such a high percentage of success on the power play versus the actual amount of minutes they get to play on the power play is quite shocking. So 16-17 is Matthew's first year in the league, Nylander's first full year, Marner's first full year. They lose to the Caps in the playoffs. That's how I always remember. Who did they lose to in the playoffs? Um, (laughs) 21st. Uh. 21st in power play time. The next year, they lose to Boston Game 7. Mm -hmm. 31st. That's last in the league because there was no Knights, I think. Uh, Next year. Uh, There was no Kraken. Oh, there's no Kraken. Excuse me. Yes, there was Knights. 18-19. 29th. 1920, 26, 2021, sorry, 2020 and 2021, 25th, 2021, 2022, 29th, and 2022, 2023, 25th, and this year they are 29th. This is cumulative? Cumulative mu- nu- minutes. Power play time. Yeah. Yes. So what are they in penalty kill time? Because if it's near the bottom in every instance, then it's fair. Well, the <laughs> other thing is if you score on a power play, the power play is over. That's right. So yes. I did want to, I, so. I did specify that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. So I think that plays into it. Yeah, but I, I'm thinking about just the way the games are refereed. If it's split down the middle, if that's how the game should come out according to the NHL, where it's, you get as many power plays as you get penalty kills. If they're 25th and 29th and 28th and all the other, on the penalty kill times, then I'm like, okay, then it's equal. So 
I've told this before. When I was at Sportsnet, there were times, like this is a national rights holder, and I am who I am. Mm -hmm. There were times where I was told, listen, we got to be careful about putting too much Toronto stuff out there. Mm Because you don't want to seem like you're showing favoritism. And they were really sensitive towards it. Mm -hmm. And it's great because now no one thinks Sportsnet is biased toward Toronto. Stares directly into the camera. And I I like that TSN's just sort of dropped it. Like, ah, screw it. Well, (laughs) well, we know butters are bread. It's a local game. They're different broadcasts because one is a national game and one is a local broadcast. No, I know. So So there's... Apples to oranges. Yes. There is... But there's that perception within Sportsnet. You're telling me the refs don't have the same thing? Come on. Did, oh, we don't want to show favoritism. Right. I think it's... And dude, we I, I pointed this out. It was last year or the season before. Remember Daryl Sutter? Mm-hmm. Uh, Daryl Sutter comes to town playing against the Leafs. He didn't like the whistle that night. And he goes, that's Toronto for you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I broke down in the LFR tonight that he made that up. He made it up, pulled it out of his bottom. He must have felt relieved after decreased bloating. He made it up. Mm -hmm. You looked at that season, the Leafs whistle versus the Flames whistle, made up. I even went back to his playing career and did season by season, the team he was on versus the Leafs made up. He made it up. So... In this situation, perception is everything. And if there are too many nights, like the Leafs have had a couple nights this season where they've had like three, four more power plays than the other team. Mm -hmm. You have too many nights like that. All the tinfoil hats start coming out. Well, it's interesting because I'm looking at penalties incurred from 20, all goes back to 16, 17. I'm too stupid to know what that means. Does that penalties incurred like penalties taken? Like drawn. Yeah. Uh, No, no. They've like, I, I slash you. I took the penalty. Got it. How many times? Yeah. So since 1617 to now, the team that has taken the most penalties are the Tampa Bay lightning, uh, 2,500 penalties. Wow. Oh, and um, it's really limited their success. The Toronto Maple Leafs <laughs> have taken 2000, which is among the lowest in the league. So what it would say to us is that when there's games involving the Leafs, they are low event penalty games. No, you look at uh, so the, Colorado. The, the, the penalty kills are yes. down and the power plays are down. Yes. Colorado, I don't know if it's still the case, but there were, like, it was like half a decade straight where they were like the top team drawing and the top team taking. Mm-hmm. And then the Leafs were top, uh, or sorry, bottom team taking, bottom team drawing. It's just it's that is made up. There's kind of something to that, though. So wait a sec, though. So we know... They want to call close games, Mm -hmm. and they're making it up as they go. Doesn't it make sense to be as kind to these people as possible? Yes, it does. (laughs) It does. They're making it up. Here's what else makes sense, and I know that everybody wants to do this anyway, but if you're the Leafs and you have access to this data, and for whatever reason, the penalty calls and the penalty uh, calls for and calls against are lower than basically anywhere else in the league. Right, you're tied with the Blues and the Sabers for the least amount of penalties taken. Mm-hmm. Um, doesn't it make sense to not focus too much on your special teams? Well, like you've got obviously you've got weapons on your on your power play, you've got weapons on your penalty kill, really good ones. But you got to build the best five on five team possible, don't you? I mean, mm-hmm. the theory is if you have a good power play and penalty kill, that means you have good players. But they built this team. The ethos of this era was we'll get them back on the power play. Yep. Well, you can't do they that. They don't get power plays. So you, you got to get power plays. And this to do season, that. Uh, in terms of total penalty kill time, so time shorthanded, the Leafs are thirty first. So, so yeah. it's just they're they're not on the power play. They're not on the penalty kill. They're not on special. Teams. Yeah. So in their 29th in total time on power. Matthews, play. So it, it's equal. <laughs> it's funny because Matthews is always like one of the league leaders in even strength goals. I mean, part of it is they're always an even strength. It's, uh, it's, I don't know why there is, well, I guess we make a big deal about it, but these conversations should be happening more about how the refereeing is just kind of made up. It's made up. That's <laughs> because, why you need to be nice to them. Yeah. yeah. You can't, like, it's not 
It's not honest to say that every game, both teams commit four infractions. Those, oh, no. They always... There, there, there is no way that that's right. There's no or, way. Or both games, both teams committed one. Years you know, ago... How, it's not possible that it's always balanced on both sides. Years ago, someone put out a line chart, and it was basically like penalties drawn, penalties taken. Yes. Almost every team was on the line, and then it's like, oh, ducks. Like, there was like... There's a few outliers. A couple outliers. Because they're like bad or something, and they take a lot of penalties that season, you know. And and here, to to show that it's not just a Leaf bias here, the one power play the Leafs got last night against Vegas, mm-hmm. that was a look into call call. The the penalty that um I think it was Amadio uh, getting Mark Giordano. Oh, front. that was that was a yes. weak call. It was yeah. a looking to call call. Yeah, they were looking to they were Tim Peel. I was looking to give one to Vegas. I got you on something. I got you on something. Uh, and Geo, he fell down so quick. Oh, he's doing everything he can to stay in the league. Yeah, well, was like it Mike, Mike Johnson on the broadcast? He's like, that happens a hundred times in the game. Yes. Matter of if you want to call it or not. But yeah. Gio just fell down on the ice. Like I Dude, he got called for embellishment like a month ago. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, Could have been right there. I understand why Amadio was pissed about that call. That yes. should never be. Yeah, because called. it's you think you're getting that call in the playoffs? Yep. Yeah. Not a chance. Maybe in the early part of the first round. Um, okay. So let's move on from this because yeah. uh because listen, it's a it's a loss. They are Still eight two and zero oh in their last ten, same oh, as they were last episode. We're fine. Yeah, it's I'm all not, fine. I'm not in a bad mood about the Leafs. I want to talk about uh, uh, first off. I I loved Ilya uh, Ilya Labushkin. Ilya Samsonov's quote. He just wanted to go home and rest. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what? So he said after the game. Uh, he said, I'm not angry. I just want to rest. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Relatable. I, f- I, I feel that, Ilya. I love an Ilya Samsonov quote. They're amazing. Yes. Um, yes. The NHL trade deadline is fast approaching. Steve's already on his phone. I am. Friday, March 8th. You're going to want to be following SDPN because we have excellent content lined up for you. Steve's going to break a trade. I am on the show. It's going to be you Bre- will hear it sometime later. Brendan Manel, who plays in the KHL. Hey, <laughs> Kevin Weeks beat me by one minute. No need to sit in front of the TV all day. When a trade breaks, the SDP will be posting immediately the reactions. And of course, uh, after all the wheeling and dealing is done, stay tuned for the SDP trade deadline review episode. And of course, leading up to it, the Chris Johnson show. Oh, is there anything else? No, no. Well, actually, there is. Basu and Godin. Thank you. The notebook. I read the script. <laughs> uh, great for your Montreal Canadiens updates. And there seem to be a player at this year's deadline. So tune in Friday, March 8th. NHL trade deadline is going to be a lot of fun. And SDPN will be all over it. You can follow us on socials. Smash that just subscribe button on YouTube and get excited for some massive deals. Well, and one more thing. What is it? Oh. You got to end it. And what? The promo. Oh, thank you. Now, I want to fast forward to a guy who's been... The story of the NHL in his first five games, Matt Rempe of the New York Rangers, two points and I think 40 million fights. Uh, Now, that's what his face looks like. That's a crazy photo. 21 years old. He is uh, enormously tall, 6'7", from Calgary, Alberta. Uh, people love this guy. He, you know, we talked about the big hit he threw uh, that that was on Bastion. Yeah. Yeah. But. You know, he's had to since fight Delorier. Basically, everybody's challenging this kid to fight. And Steve, you had something you wanted to say about him because it's been a really eventful first week. And you can't help but root for somebody that comes in, batters some bodies, scores some goals, fights some fight. You got to love that. You got to love that. But you got you got something on this that you're like, word of word warning. Like, listen, I feel the same way about this kid. You ever have a feeling and you recognize it? Like you, it's a it's familiar and you and you and you can place it, like mm-hmm. you know where it comes from. I feel the same way about this kid. I have the same fascination about this kid that I had with Derek Bugard. Mm. Derek Bugard, if if you're not old enough to remember watching him, holy shit. There's a video on YouTube. Uh, there was a wild, a Minnesota wild versus Anaheim Ducks game. And he was on the Minnesota wild and it got out of hand and they send him over the bench. Mm-hmm. The fans are boo guard, boo guard. Like just the, 
He had one of those names. The Boogeyman. They send him over the boards, and it's just a Cadillac going over the boards with skates on. And it's a league full of extremely tough players. Fascinating players to watch. And he was far and away the toughest. To the point where he got in fights he didn't want to get into. Todd Fedorik, you can still find this online, chased him down the ice. I think he had one glove off, holding on to his jersey. Bugard finally fights him. He throws one, doesn't quite connect. He throws another. There's a little bit of shuffling going on. Literally breaks Todd Fedorik's orbital bone. He broke his skull. I had a fascination with this guy. And then years later, this kid comes along and he's six foot seven or six foot eight. Mm -hmm. Whatever weight he is, he's going to probably be 15, 20 pounds heavier going forward. He's only 21. He's 21. Fighting is still here. We still have a fascination with it. A lot of people have been very honest about their feelings with this kid. They're like, listen, I know about the dangers of fighting in this sport, but there's still a part of me that says Zuga Booga, and I friggin' love this. There's still a caveman aspect of it. This kid, though, the difference between how I feel about him and how I feel about Bugard is this kid is going out there and getting his ass kicked. He's tough as nails. That's a great photo. Like he's taken on Delorier. By the way, if, if you're listening, his eyes, both his eyes are black. Like, like the, the left eye or the, sorry, the right eye is a little better than the left eye. The left eye looks like honestly like a movie prop. Like yeah. He's, had, he's, he's been in the makeup chair for four hours. He like looks that. like he's wearing makeup. It's amazing. His eyes still have whites in them. Uh, it's amazing. His nose is straight. Uh, listen, any kid who's going to come in and be, try to be a tough guy mm -hmm. is going to have to fight some really tough customers. His first NHL game, he fights Matt Martin. So you know he's not a coward. <laughs> like, that's a that's a differently wired human being. Yeah. To go out there and be like, I'm going to fight Matt Martin in my first game outdoors. Like, that's as close to the Roman Coliseum as you can get. <laughs> yeah. And then he fights Nick Delorier, who might be the reigning champ. Until he comes across friggin' Olivier on Columbus, who rinses this kid. <laughs> And you just watch him fight over and over and over again. And I guess when I watch Bugard, it got to the point where no one wanted to fight him because no one was stupid enough to do it. This is a young kid taking beatings. And after that Olivier one, I was like, all right, let's maybe take a step back a bit. I'm not saying he has to stop fighting. I'm just, I, I guess I'm out of practice seeing someone fight every game they play. He has like double penalty minutes to ice time mm -hmm. <laughs> this early in his career. It's mm -hmm. easy to track now. Um, but there was something about that Olivier fight, his fourth fight in five games or third fight in five games. Four, because a lot of people don't count the Siegenthaler one, but I do. They, he hit Bastion and then Siegenthaler went at him and he push they beat Siegenthaler to the ground quickly. yeah and that's fun. not a fighter sure yeah Martin's a fighter Siegenthaler I mean he obviously destroys mm -hmm. and then there's Deloria uh, who he he I think he got the better half of that and then he got Deloria Deloria, Deloria had the takedown yeah yeah Deloria know? had the takedown but he, then, he was uh he had like a friggin birthmark on his face from yeah. the I've never seen someone just bruise a forehead like that and then Olivier won that one on Sunday Rinsed for sure. Rinsed the kid. Rinsed the kid. I don't know. It's is is he fighting too much? You can't fight 82 times. You'll I lose. think it'll I think it calms down. Like I think there's a bit of an overreaction because of how quickly the four fights happened and of the amount of noise that Rempy made and it's been I think it's been awesome if you're a Rangers fan to see this kid come in the in the league like this and it's so out of practice of the way the NHL works because yeah. the Delorier one, it happened. They were uh, in warmups and then he's like, are we going tonight? And Remby's like, yep. And then the Olivier one they're they're both at the center ice in, in warmups again. And they do a little nod thing. They're like, let's go. And it, it happens during the game. These setup fights don't typically happen anymore. It's really rare. So really the fact rare. that he's done 
three setups and the Matt Martin one as well, going going right at, at after the puck dropped. Um, the fact that he did three in two weeks is insane. Yeah. So I don't think it continues. Like I don't think there's going to be 56 fights for this kid no. by the end of the season. He's just on pace for it. He's just on pace for <laughs> it right now. It's like when you're on pace for 100 goals to start the season, you know? Yeah. So I think like I we'll see how I think it's Columbus again tonight, how that goes. Hopefully there's not a fight there and we see him just ease into a role in the NHL and playing on this fourth line. He's, he's averaging four minutes a night. Mm -hmm. Derek Bugard throughout his career averaged five. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow. And like the Rempy's not even getting enough credit for on Saturday against Philly. Yep. That was the game winning goal. It, got a goal! It, it bounced off of him. It, well, it kind of like he he was in front of the net. He made a nice play. Goes in. It's his goal. Game winning goal. They they win that game there to extend the winning streak. Gets another assist in the Columbus game on on Sunday. So he's making an impact on the fourth line. This is a fourth line where they've playing wing right now. And the fact that he's making an impact offensively is cool. But I think the noise will die down. Let's where there's a lot of like I'm huge on Rempe because it's so awesome. You know, to see him happen, but I think it'll it'll die down. Just I think he'll listen to you. Uh, the, the react that reaction, maybe his coach, that reaction <laughs> that's come out of his his fight so far. He or he'll be like, I want round two with Olivier, like because right. that seems to be the way he's wired. And listen, I'm not tut tutting the kid. I'm not tut tutting anyone who enjoys the fight. Um, whoever the Rangers play now, it's it's Columbus. He's yeah, playing. I think I think it's tonight, Columbus. I was looking at it. Earlier. What do you think? I'm turning that game off. I'm watching. I, I'm fascinated with this kid. I want to see what he's doing. Yeah. The, the uh, Rangers, Jackets Rangers go again tonight. That Rangers game that basically uh, got uh, everybody fined, um, including ownership, when there were nine fights. Which one's that? Uh, I think it was against the Capitals because Tom Wilson had just, uh, he beat the crap out of someone. I can't remember. Panarin? Doesn't matter. Yeah. But <laughs> then the follow-up game. Who wasn't watching that game? Mm-hmm. The um, the the Battle of Alberta from a few years ago. Like, who's not watching that? The follow up to uh, the the Leafs and Canucks had a line brawl. People were tuning in throughout the game, and then Good Branson and Matt Martin screaming at each other. We all knew they're playing each other in like two or three months, and they're going. Mm -hmm. Like, who's not watching that? That aspect of the human brain. <laughs> still exists i'm just acknowledging my own internal conflict. yeah i don't I, I think it'd be unfair to deny that the fights have been entertaining and the fact that we're talking about this kid is because he's had these fights and it's a part of the game right now and it's an entertainment factor and it's been exciting and it's cool to see him him go out and, and fight all these tough guys and every time a new tough guy he faces they're like i want that i want to challenge this young kid because he's into the league and he's got to go through me it's like a boss level oh, yeah. each time and it's been awesome. The, like, ter the terrifying thing about this kid is you get beat up enough, you learn a few tricks, and then you're the one handing out the beatings. Mm -hmm. Yes, but there, let, let's yeah. remember this. That was the Dano Char. There is health yes. in this. Right. For and sure. never talk about the ones who don't make it. And Derek Bugard died at 28. That's unbelievable. And so that, I think, it's not that we're like, oh, that's exactly what's going to happen with Matt. It's like, it's just... You do need to be hockey's an extraordinarily violent sport. Mm -hmm. You gotta you gotta manage manage your minutes, manage your fights. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's I think that's the original point, which is he came in like a freight train, what a great first week or whatever. Bring it down a little bit. Yeah. Bring and it I down a little bit. Throw the body. But like let's let's stop the hits to the head for a bit. There's enough guys around the New York Rangers that can tell this and tell Matt Rempe that, hey. Okay, you did this. You d got nothing left to prove. We know you're going to be able to go with anybody now. Ease yourself into an NHL role. And because, like, who knows how his future on the team goes if they pick up somebody like Adam Henry going for the playoffs. Like, his his spot in the lineup could be squeezed out, you yeah. know? So you got to just maintain a role within this team right now and ease yourself back into just an everyday NHLer. Um. I want to do a quick shout out to Calgary Flames fans who are super pissed about one of our reels that went viral on Instagram of all places uh, because we were talking about the Flames and how they've been wishy-washy. They won another game against the LA Kings last night. Now, what? first off, I think the story there, no offense to the Flames, is how bad the Kings have been for two months now and what the hell is going on. Uh, the Calgary Flames look good. Five-game winning streak. I don't... I, I was actually surprised to see so many Flames fans upset 
uh, about this because they were like, well, why don't you check in on your GM? He put us in. Oh, the boy, spot. boy, and, boy, and, boy. And I got news for you. You got to decide what you want, guys. Well, tell me you go. You got to decide what you want. Yeah. How many times? OK, I, I want to ask if you're the type of person who has ever left a comment on a TSN or Sportsnet video and gone, oh, here we go again. Toronto, Toronto, Toronto. Oh, Toronto, Toronto, Toronto. Well, now here we are, admittedly fans, and we're not talking about the Leafs. We're talking about the Flames. Are they or aren't they? Like, do, Which is, by the way, been the theme of their entire year. Yeah. Like, has, has sorry, has, has the notion of the Flames being a buyer or a seller fallen out of the sky? Is that something we made up? No. Or is it, it something yeah. that's talked or, about on national television or do every they, day? Or do they feed Elliot Friedman information literally every... Every Everybody. Every game. Everybody. One, CJ's been talking about oh, the no. Flames. But what I'm saying is it's on Hockey Night in Canada. Right? Cor so. One correction, uh, four game winning streak, not five. Uh, oh. Two. Not yet. I don't I don't know if it's productive if the if the conversation is just like, hey, let's go at the Instagram comments. No, no, no. no it's no, a no, five no. game. By the way, it's a five. Oh, yeah, it's four. No, no. I know. My th point this is. This isn't about Flames fans. This happens. <laughs> I think it doesn't sound no, no. Like, well, Here, I wait. don't know what's happening. I don't wait, think wait. it's a five game streak, by the way, as of last night. Five game. Oh, well, there you go. They beat Doesn't the, matter. They're they beat the Kings, streak. Oilers, Bruins, Jets. Oh no, I'm wrong. Die. Adam, what are you about it's four games. <laughs> Never mind. All the comments are right. They are. No, uh, <laughs> it's it's this happens all the time. It's not just the Flames. This happens all the time when we as a show discuss. Oh, I don't team. care about this. I don't no, care no. about this. No, I was going to go Adam, a direction with, with the Flames when, when we talk about another team. And they go, well, what about the Leafs? And I'm like, well, what about them? We're not talking about them right now. We're talking about your team. Is, is that okay? I just, I, my thing was always, and, and somebody messaged me. They're like, you're wrong about the flames. And I said, okay, what am I wrong about? And they're like, well, this, this, and this. And I said, does that, does that not support my point? Which is they're an uh, up and down, hot and cold, mediocre team. I think. And then I said, if you think they're good, like go off, but they're not. If you, if good is in the playoffs to me, good is the, the top half of the league. The top 16 teams are good. The top, the bottom 16 teams are less than good. Is that fair? Is well, that, so, and uh, here's what changed. Yeah. The invisible hand of Murray Edwards. I want Flames fans to understand that this owner has a lot more say in the day-to-day -day things than, than they think. You think it's just the general manager? You think a guy like Murray Edwards is sitting there letting the GM do whatever he wants? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So it doesn't really matter who you put in there. By the way, people are like, ah, oh, true living, true living. And I get it. He signed some contracts that you probably would like to have back, made some trades you probably not do again. Well, and this show notably loves everything he's done so far. Come on. Guys. I know, I know. That's well, come on. I don't, but I don't the reaction is less so. I think you gotta be honest about how your organizational structure runs. Like in Toronto. We talk about the fact of the invisible hand of Brendan Shanahan, right? He's been there for 11 over years. a decade, and they haven't won shit. And we've mentioned it. Yeah. So, <laughs> like, so what I'm trying to say is, like, uh, if you want to blame it all in true living, and you don't want to acknowledge Murray Edwards, why then did the Flames hire a head coach that true living explicitly did not want and did not get along with? Why did they hire him? Because he was the guy that got them really far 20 years ago when Murray Edwards was the owner back then, too. Mm -hmm. That's why. Because he has a good relationship with the owner. That, I'm talking about Daryl Sutter. Um, I think you got to, and this is what my point to this guy was when we were talking in the DMs, is like, like forget, the, forget the Craig Conroy facade. Mm -hmm. You need to be thinking higher than that. You need to be thinking, what would Murray Edwards do? Because pretty... Unless Craig Conroy's got an unbelievable argument that sways the billionaire, it's probably going to go the way that Murray Edwards wants it to go. It's his team. Also, Craig Conroy was hired by Brad Treliving a decade ago. Yes. <laughs> so, so there's some continuity of, of management there, too. Yes. There's an enormous continuity of management. Now, if the Flames go on a tear... I don't blame them for holding on to everything and going, we're in this. That, which if, is something that we discussed. <laughs> but if you are a Flames fan and you truly believe that this team's a Stanley Cup contender, cool. Cool. You're, um, you're in a minority. Yeah. And that's, 
I so so in 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 that in that segment response and stuff like people are like, oh, you might as well delete your channel. I'm like, oh god, like I <laughs> you you have no idea. We hear that every show, and I I I think I think it's like this is the problem with Calgary in a microcosm, mm -hmm. the Flames in a microcosm, is that win a little bit, we're back. We are so back. Right. We're all the way back. Right. And then they lose a bit, and they're like, well, I'm I just I I can't watch it. I'm not gonna watch the game. This is. This is the problem. It's got to be a tough winners season. are consistent. Look three mile, three hours up the road in Edmonton. They were bad at the beginning of the year, grant you. Consistently bad. Consistently bad. But <laughs> what did they do? What have they done since? They've been consistently good. And what have they done the last two to three years? Uh, pre been pretty consistently it's, good. Basically, as soon as Tippett was gone, they figured it out. Yeah. Right. That's what winners do. And I don't see that from this Flames team. And I haven't seen it since they got killed by the Oilers. Was it Tippett or McClellan who was most recent? Like, dude, they were so bad. So it was, it was, <laughs> wasn't it McClellan with Shirelli and then Tippett in the last years of Shirelli and then Holland fired Tippett and hired Woodcroft, I think. Yeah, whenever Woodcroft joined is when the ship turned. So that's my point. I think so. I, we, I wanted to touch on the Flames because it was a uh, touch to nerve. Yeah. Well, uh, now, Adam. You know the the worst thing that you said though. I'm from Toronto. Yeah, I know. I know that's okay. Like, listen, you can you can if you just catch that clip and you don't know what we said outside of that, I can understand why people get upset yeah. because no, you didn't see the show as a whole. There's there's a portion of the population that's just gonna hate your guts the moment you open your mouth, and that's, that's fine. And that's fine. Totally fine. Um, Jesse, can we can we bring up the Nick Cousins clip? Yeah, I got it ready to go. This one I love. Nick Cousins. He's dead. There, there he is. <laughs> there he is. There lies Nick Cousins. Next, the blind shall yeah. see and the lame shall walk. Yeah, and and this for everybody is where, listening, this is why I'm a big believer in Joel Olstein ministry. For everybody listening, describe Nick Cousins. Uh, because Nick Cousins is dead. He, he got punched in the face, by, and he died. <laughs> by uh, and Jordan Green doesn't matter. He died, and okay. so and when when and then you know Joel Olstein said, and Christ has risen, and look at this. There's a scrum. And Nick Cousins opens his pretty little. Oh, I'm awake! I'm awake, and I'm gonna go fight somebody. I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab him, grab him. So, and and so I gotta give Nick <laughs> Cousins credit here because he did exactly what Steve has been saying people should be doing. Act which like is, you're dead when you when you get a slight hit. Act like you're dead mm -hmm. because oftentimes the call is made on the reaction of the player, and we've seen this with high sticking calls too, mm -hmm. like high sticks to the face. If you don't sell the high stick to the face, oftentimes you don't get it, right? Mm -hmm. You don't, because the ref doesn't really see it. So Nick Cousins is trying to sell a call here. I can't blame him for that. But what is amazing is that it's this guy. <laughs> it's Nick Cousins. It's, it's the guy who is a rat, will never stand up for himself, always run away. Yeah, but just wait till he sees Kevin BX in person. Is that what he said? Uh -huh. Oh, just wait. Did he say that? No, remember when uh, he was asked about the rat comments and he's like, oh, I'd like to talk to him. What What, what are you going to do? It, I don't from the ground? <laughs> I don't remember this. Oh, yeah. Well, it was only a few weeks ago, I think, wasn't it? Because the comments were so boring, they weren't even noteworthy. What did BXS say? He, he said he was a rat. He called him a rat on national TV, but Cousins was injured, so he didn't get asked about it until he returned to the lineup. And okay. when he finally did... He's just like, oh, you know, I wonder if he'd say that to me. <laughs> yeah, I think after all this bullshit, Nick, he'd say it to you louder. <laughs> now, here. That's kind of funny. Now, there is something that happened here where I wanted to give Cousins the benefit of the doubt. I'm immediately going to take it away. Don't worry. But I wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt. There he is dead again. We, He's, yeah, dead on the ground. We can't show you the footage, obviously. Greenway is the one who punches Cousins in the face. Mm -hmm. Then someone, I don't know who, mm -hmm. goes after Greenway, just mm -hmm. one of Cousins' teammates. That causes Greenway to stumble, and Greenway very narrowly avoids kicking Cousins in the face or neck. You yes. can see it right there. Yes. It's, oh, yes. there it is right there. there there's it's the skate very, right yeah. above his shoulder. Oh, like, woo. Now. And it's because a Florida Panther is taking out Greenway. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now. And you can see Greenway's other skate. Like, he's very clearly off balance. Yeah, look. Right here. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Falling over. Yes, he's falling over. So, I think you can relate to the moment in your life where you're down and hurt, and then you see red. 
Mm -hmm. And I think that's what happened or could be what happened here with Nick Cousins. Highly relatable. Highly relatable. Now, I would believe that theory that I came up with myself more if he had gone after Greenway. Did he? No. No. Who did he go after? Five foot nine, 176 pound Jacob Bryson. There he is. <laughs> this guy sucks. By the way, Jacob Bryson, who's not looking at him. Not looking at him. From behind. Grabs him in a headlock as hard as you can. And you know what's going to be so annoying? So annoying. In June. Stanley Cup. When the Panthers win the Stanley Cup. Yeah. And their mm -hmm. fans litter the ice with rubber rats. Mm hmm and he poses with one inside the cup. Yep. Yeah. If I was him, I'd, I'd grab Sam Bennett. We would both take a picture on the ground pretending to be asleep with rats coming out of the cup. In case you're wondering. They're going to win. The you know that, right? Like, oh, yeah. The, the, the Panthers might fuck around and win the President's Trophy. They are a point out of first place in the NHL. One point away from the Vancouver Canucks. They've played two less games, and they are ahead of the Boston Bruins in the Atlantic Division officially. Uh, Florida is 8-2-0 in their last 10. Boston is 3-2-5. Sorry, where are the Panthers in the league? They are second place. Where are the Bruins in the league? They are, let me see, they are third. What division are they in? Atlantic. Life is endless pain. Yeah. Life is endless, unrelenting pain. So the Leafs will play because because the Leafs are pretty far up on Tampa already. Like they're. You oh, know, good. Them, them, they must be in first. Tampa. Oh, wait, the, they aren't they're because the, the second and third place team are in the freaking division. <laughs> endless pain. The Leafs, uh, unless Tampa goes on some sort of heater here, are going to play Boston or Florida in the first round. Endless. Or, pain. or, or Toronto's goes off a cliff unrelenting, miserable <laughs> agony. <laughs> the Florida Panthers goal differential, by the way, is something to be just marveled at. It's a plus 52. That is the best in the league. Yeah, and if you are if you think this is like a small thing they've been doing here, since December 13th, the Florida Panthers are the number one team in the NHL. Uh, that's a 31-game span. This is, they've been doing this for a while, and they're going to probably win the Stanley Cup and Nick Cousins is going to shove it right down Steve's throat. Yep. Yep. And then I'm going to be like, hey, why'd you do that? And he's going to go, <laughs> oh! <laughs> and explode. He's going to recreate the Phil Kessel hot dog photo with rats. Rats. Oh, Live so. rats. You know what, though? And he'll deserve it. It doesn't mean we don't call him a rat. It doesn't mean that I regret anything that I've he ever said pose. about this player, but he should absolutely do this. He should yeah. pose with George Peros, too. Um, you, for, you gotta, you gotta <laughs> include the people who helped you get there. I do want to say this. <laughs> Wrinkle in the plan. Mm -hmm. If the playoffs begin today, let's say all things are equal. Okay. Mm -hmm. Playoffs begin today. I like this game. The first round. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like. I love. I like every time I see a playoff will begin today. Tweet on Twitter. I'm. I'm all. It's for it. <laughs> it gets me excited for the playoffs. Yeah, like, I'm like, ooh, yeah. we get this matchup. And we're only. It's fake, listen, know? we're in the back quarter of the year. We we're 75 yeah. percent as of today. 75 percent of the way through the. We year. got six weeks till the NHL playoffs. Though, yeah, baby. I'm pretty sure, right? Yeah. Every LFR, I put the game number, mm -hmm. and lately I've been like, really. Last uh, night I was like fifty seven. <laughs> oh, we're getting oh. close. <laughs> there's there's we're a uh, there. after this week, there's two weeks left in most fantasy hockey leagues. Yes. And then you gotta play the playoffs. Like Oh no. We're coming down to uh -oh. it. All right. It's getting exciting. Uh -oh. So here's the deal. <laughs> okay. So I'll just I'll 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 do this the one that I'm most excited about last. Okay. Oh. So in the we're gonna just do do you want me to do east and west? Let's go. Okay, do so west, west first. Give me, give me playoff. First. I, I wanna continue my good mood as well. West long as first, possible. okay. Yeah. So in the West, the Vancouver Canucks would play the Nashville Predators. Ah, uh, that's. Uh, I got a Nashville question for you, Adam, in the press conference. Uh, Winnipeg <laughs> Jets would play the Los Angeles Kings. I'm sure they would like oh, that matchup. The Dubois Bowl. I need that. Like I need. By the way, season. L.A. Kings fans are ready to fire that guy into the sun. I saw at, during the game and I after he was the game. Better. Was, no, people are so no, pissed. Dubois's been Especially at the end of the game, game. apparently, it's just no hustle. No hustle. Um, Dude, he's paid like a star. You got to play like The Dallas Stars would play the Colorado Avalanche. That's... Ooh! <laughs> Life is That's pain. unfortunate. For yeah, both it's a of shame. Them. Yeah. It's a shame. Um, oh, uh, that's it, the series of the first round. Because you lose a so monster. You yeah. lose monster. This is why I hate this format, because you lose monster teams in the first round. I want yeah. the monsters in the later rounds. Is that rounds, the 2-3? 
That's the two three. Two three That's sucks. Stupid. Two three fucking yeah. sucks. No. It's terrible. Yeah. It's brutal. um and uh, Vegas and Edmonton. Rematch. Oh shit! Oh nice. We got that. Nice. Yeah. Dude, oh, no, that was a rematch. Wait. No, what am I wait. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I thought it was Winnipeg. No, Vegas beat Edmonton last playoff. Second round, right? Yeah, second. Okay. Round. Yeah. So wait, Vancouver, Nashville. Yeah. Which is really, really funny because Vancouver should win that in a landslide, but UC Soros. The Dubois Bowl with Winnipeg, LA mm -hmm. is great drama. Colorado, Dallas is spectacular hockey. No one could beat that. Boom! Vegas Oilers. <laughs> yeah, just don't sleep, baby. Hell yeah! And then you got... So here's what's crazy is that it's... Don't even tell me the East. I don't give a shit. Um, That's amazing. What has got to be decided between Ed Edmonton and Vegas at this point is... is By points percentage, Edmonton would have home ice advantage. By actual points currently, because Vegas has played three more games, Vegas would have the advantage. Got it. Okay. So, uh, okay. In the, uh, in the East. Mm -hmm. So we've got Florida-Tampa. Oh, Florida. Wow. That's the one Good I was shit. most excited about. Because yeah. listen, Tampa's not had, and, and please stay out of my DMs on this one. You haven't had a good year by Tampa standards. End of story. They know that. No, they don't. Every time we mention they it, don't? it's a problem. Uh, well, some people don't. Well, they have the Hart Trophy winner. Yeah. That's right. Kucherov, right. Yeah. No, I'm saying like they, they have lots of things to be happy about this year in terms of like mm -hmm. individual performances. What? When I uh, went at Kucherov for being an enormous diaper shitting baby at the All Star game, boy, they were not impressed. That's what I'm telling you. But because he was trolling, you see, he was trolling. Oh, yeah, okay. It was an intentional, brilliant thing he did on purpose, and not simply the act of a hungover man being miserable. Yeah, I think yes. that's what it was. Yes. Now, do they have a name for the tour when Tampa plays Florida? Like, it's the, it's the battle the of something. Because it can't be Florida the dominate. Because Florida, the, they call them the Florida Panthers, right? So you can't yeah. really call it the Battle of Florida. That doesn't make sense. Mm. Do we the have a do the we have DeSantis a Bowl? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. Okay, not that one. Can we come up with something the beach catchy? Party. Something that go on a t shirt? The tiki the tiki bar party. Uh <laughs> Battle of the Horrendous Shirts. They're not both South Beach, so you can't do that. No, you can't. No. I don't know. No, we'll come up with something. Yeah, we got to We got to be better than this. Um, yes, we do. <laughs> the New York Rangers would play the Detroit Red Wings, who are winners of six straight, by the way. Detroit Red Wings appear to be for real. Watch out. Patrick Kane, too, come al has come alive the yeah. last little bit. The team, tons of points. The team he wanted to go to last year that didn't bring him back mm -hmm. versus. Uh, oh, there's yeah. some rumors about. Uh, I saw some rumors about Tarasenko going to the Rangers, but they couldn't fit him under the cap. No, so and they can't they retain can't on him back. again. Yeah. They they're not they're not allowed on the CBA to retain on him, so I don't think it works. Yeah, mm. yeah. Uh, they should have just resigned. But anyway, that's a good series. That's uh, a good hockey series. Yeah, that'll mm -hmm. be a, it'll be. But there isn't like the rivalry there yet. Again, like it's a it's an original. So, six, yeah, like, there will be six by the um, end of the series. Though we'll, there will be. Uh, this one's I I think this one's my favorite one just for the lulls. Carolina Philadelphia. Oh, Ooh, the Tony D'Angelo. <laughs> Love that Philly. one. That's actually great. Philly yes. is so much better than anybody's willing to give them credit. Why for. are they selling? <laughs> yeah, man, they're better wow. than Philly's willing to give them. Credit yeah, for. it's true. Daniel <laughs> Daniel Breyer sitting there like, "Fuck, we're good. No, Damn, I, I don't know what to do." <laughs> I actually think he's smart. If if I were if I were him, like if the Leafs were truly vicious. In the years they should have been vicious, mm -hmm. the team would have been a lot better, a lot quicker for a lot longer. Mm -hmm. They should have traded guys like JVR. They should have traded guys like Bozak on expiring deals. Own rental. What a crock of shit. Let's do right by the player. What a crock of shit. But so if Briere has the balls to go and trade a Sean Walker or any of the other guys that are apparently available, um, I and they make the playoffs, I respect the hell out of it. It's actually yeah. kind of brilliant. Like it, it, selling while in a playoff spot in the metro kind of makes sense on account oh. of the metro we, is but we called it the mid-tropolitan and people were pissed at us and we were right. Absolutely it's mid. Um brutal. And then the Toronto Maple Leafs, Boston Bruins. Nice. Listen, life is painful. If if life Toronto if Toronto agony. wants to and here's here's what I'm hearing, okay? We got a new CEO of Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. And this guy has a broadcast background. Met him several times. Steve, I think you've met him. Jesse, I think you've met him. 
Keith Pelly. Keith he was, Pelly. Yes. He was our boss's boss for years boss's, at Rogers. Boss's boss's boss. I sent him emails that he didn't read for a year. That's yes. okay. No. Yeah, and that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> you probably, probably don't hold the grudge about it. No, probably no, I'm busy, not, man. No one read them. Don't worry. <laughs> this is a guy who is credited along with Scott Moore of creating what is now the cult that is CFL on TSN. They, those guys put it together in the 90s, basically saved the CFL, to be honest, on it. Seriously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the European golf tour is thriving. The European golf tour is thriving. They can wear shorts, thanks to Keith Pelly. Mm -hmm. uh, bring uh, this back to Boston. No, what I'm saying is that that Boston series will be the most consequential series of the last half century. Why? Because if they don't win, Shanny's gone. You oh, think? Yeah. Shanny's gone. If the Leafs do not win, you will see the end of Brandon Shanahan in Toronto. Mark my words. I hope that's you it. are right. Because all the evidence points to uh, they, they keep him around and he's good and they like him as a boss. But the evidence that you have is that there's somebody new in charge above him, which is, I think, a very good thing for the organization in that you get a new fresh set of eyes and that the 11 years of failure on the ice... Uh, would there actually be some consequences? I, I think. Here, wait, guys. Here's wait. what I also think. No, no. Oh, please. Well, I got this crazy outside the box thing that I want to try. What if we keep it the same? I hope they win. <laughs> so this is the, oh, yes, and obviously. this is why. This is obviously, why, Stephen. When, no, it's not obvious. So this, no, but here's here's what's interesting about that though. I think Shanahan's no fool, and I think he knows it. Oh yeah. And this is why, and we talked about this in the Calgary segment, the invisible hand of Brendan Shanahan, the invisible hand of uh, 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 Murray Edwards. The Leafs are going to be extraordinarily aggressive at the trade deadline. If you think that they're not looking at this stuff, every team is. Every team is looking at who are our potential matchups. Florida and Boston? Ugh. 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 Okay. Well, I guess we're going to have to do something. The Toronto Maple Leafs are going to make some big moves. Yeah. It's going to happen in the next few weeks. And if they don't well, get through Boston. One week. Well, yeah, next week. You don't yeah, have. Are, there are not a few weeks oh, left. They're going to claim somebody off waivers, Jesse. Sam there's, Carrick. There's about on. 10 days. Um, Is he on waivers? No, he's not. Oh. He's, he's, he's a trade chip. Um, yeah. Really? Apparently, he's he's valuable piece now. Okay. Um, Good for Sam. Yeah. Good happy for, for him. Sam. I'm just going to tell you that, that it this is... This next three months, you thought June last year for the Toronto Maple Leafs with Dubas leaving in that weird press conference? May. Yeah. Or May, sorry. Yeah. If you thought that was interesting. <laughs> June. <yeah>. No. Adam <laughs> was just uh, like a week off. There Get you go. Stuffed. There you go. If you thought that was interesting, you watch. This Toronto Maple Leafs team, this era, the Shanna Plan era, either something ha something good happens, which we all want, yeah, or it's over. Or there'll be Shanna. That's it. Shanna banned. They should uh, bring back Harold Ballard. Oh, that went well. Yeah, I don't well. uh, think they should, uh, Jesse. I think that's a poor decision. <laughs> nah, let's do it. <laughs> Go right. back to the old. Make it new again. There are other things that we did not get to uh, because we got to wrap the show. But I do want to say this, hmm. and I will give credit where credit is due. It was nice to see Gary Bettman say something nice about a small Canadian market, wasn't it? Yes. Him coming in and going, I don't know why everybody th is talking about relocation. I don't know, Gary. Why do you think we're talking about it? Could it be because two consequential franchises left Canada under your tutelage? Could it be that yeah. you stepped up to the microphone on May 31st, 2012 and said, if we're not selling out the building every night in Winnipeg, this isn't going to work? Your husband cheats on you and then is like, why do you think I'm cheating on you? <laughs> Like, you give away fifty thousand well, dollars in a shoebox, and your husband leaves you, and you're like, "What happened?" Yeah, uh, I don't understand. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> That's for the VIPs, yeah. by the way. I just want to say, great for him to jump in, mm -hmm. support Winnipeg, and the quote that blew me away was, "Get over your anxiety and come to the game." I'm like, "What? <laughs> uh, what? I don't think. Yeah. Don't think so. He can't. He can't." Gary Bettman likes going meh and smudging every good thing he does. He does. He can't. He can never give you 100. He's got to leave oh. you with 96, 97, yeah. something around there. But for him, but here's the thing. pretty good. We talked about this last episode. Canadian TV deals coming up. Mm -hmm. He needs Winnipeg. Winnipeg, you matter big time because he's not going to be able to get even the price he got 10 years ago mm -hmm. for the Canadian TV deal if you're not here. So just like 
the Coyotes have been on life support for a decade and a half. And I'm not saying Winnipeg's on life support by any stretch. They're not. They're not. Um, the Winnipeg Jets ain't going anywhere. Mm-mm. And that was nice to hear the commissioner come out and say that. And by the way, when the economy improves and job markets improved and, and wages improve, I'm thinking you'll see more people at the game. And by the way, that's weird. The Winnipeg Jets are going to, they should go deep this year. Yeah, well, and like a lot of teams have attendance issues and then the playoffs roll around and all of a sudden they don't. Interesting, isn't it? Yeah, very interesting. Uh, I also want to say a big shout out to Sean Monahan, who has six goals in his last four games. Great story, dude. Yeah. I thought he was cooked. The last thing I want to mention, and I didn't get enough time, we didn't get enough time to get to it, but I do want to say the Vancouver Canucks versus their media versus the Canucks versus the Pet- versus Patterson's extension has been absolutely wild to see. Um, Too wild to keep up with. And what I love about the Canucks being this good is you're reminded about how much fun it is on the internet when the Canucks are this good. Oh. The, the Canucks, their media, their fans are so completely unique. The passion per capita. It's crazy. Wild. And what's it? So it, it started with the Donnie and Dolly um, uh, uh, Twitter poll, and they said if Pedersen moves on, who's going to be more to blame, Pedersen or the Canucks? Okay. And. 75% of people, roughly, said Patterson. Now, what we're hearing and what's being spoken about is how much the Canucks desperately want to get this guy signed. He's been offered an eight-year contract where he makes tw- he'd makes he make $12 bucks a year. And if I'm Patterson, I'm looking at that and going, fuck off. I, first off, he doesn't want to negotiate in season. Second, he's got another RFA year. So, so the salary cap is going up. So Patterson, uh-huh. from a financial standpoint... Barring injury, and he's been very healthy lately. It doesn't make sense for him to sign a long long term contract. That right dude saw Nylander sign mid season and said, "What a dumbass!" Because <laughs> because <laughs> Patterson, if he signs one more year as an RFA, yeah, he gets the four million dollar bump in the cap, and then the next year it's projected to go up another four. Uh, imagine uh, having a tough negotiation with uh, Louis Gross and a Swede with a Mona Lisa smile. <laughs> Can't relate. Is it outrageous in two years? Let's say the, the the projections are correct, and oftentimes they aren't. Let's say the salary cap, what is it now? 87 and a half? Yeah. Okay. There. 87 and a half. And it oh no, no, it's 83 and a half. It's going to 87. And then it's potentially going to go up to 92. Is it unfair based on percentage of cap that Elias Patterson makes between 15 and 20% of the Canucks cap? <sighs> Is it 15? Un- well, okay. Is that, what is it? <laughs> well, 15. He's going to make 15. 15. <laughs> okay. 45. No, no. Is it unfair? Because I'm, I'm looking at what Matthews is making just now. Just to, this, this year, he's making 14% of the Leafs cap. This, so the percentage seems sure. high. But this is the best player this team's had in a generation. Is it out oh, of the realm? Quinn Hughes. I don't know. Is it out of the realm of possibilities for Elias Pettersson to get $14 million a year? In two years. You know, we always... In two years. No. It can't be. So if you're him, why wouldn't you? Well, if given the option to make $14 million, wouldn't you? That's what I think. would. I would you. (laughs) Or you sign three years and you wait for the cap to jump and then you sign your long-term deal. Isn't it so weird that, uh, like, this year is the... Has has the highest chance that we've seen in a very long time mm-hmm. of a Canadian team winning the cup. Mm-hmm. Very long time. Ignoring the East completely. So there's no Toronto bias involved. The Oilers got a good shot. The Jets got a good shot. And the Canucks got a good shot. Mm-hmm. And for the story for three of uh, two of those three teams is negative. With the Jets, it's they might go to the point where the commissioner had to fly to Winnipeg and do a press conference and the Canucks are talking about this and the green men the green and men the are green back men. oh yeah nice green to see them back. let's go nice and the to see green. them back but like Pedersen right now is 25 years old washed he'll he'll have his RFA year you know they'll qualify him at whatever the cost is mm-hmm. if you're him you know they want you on an 8 year deal if you say nah I'll take 3 that means you're tw- 28 or 29, depending upon when he's born, the next time you have to sign a contract. That means the salary cap could have gone up as much as 12 to 15% 
in the next three years. It depends on some revenue from the American, but the American TV deals are great. If the Canadian TV deal even stays stationary, it's going up by 10 to 15%. It's a risk. It's a risk, but he could still make 12 million bucks a year for three years and then go and make 14 or 15. Like, gosh, we have to start talking in those numbers because that's kind of where, again, it's never about the actual number. It's about percentage of cap. Mm -hmm. I, I think if I'm a Canucks fan, I'm frustrated. This is a story because he doesn't want to negotiate now. The Canucks do. Yeah. But also it, he's not um, getting traded. That's not on the table. This deadline. No. Yet. No, no, not the yeah, not the deadline. Right, but so if, like Canucks fans are getting their heads into all right, it's a trade deadline. Maybe we're gonna buy a little more. We already got Tobias Lindholm, uh, Elias Lindholm, Elias, sorry, yeah. and um, uh, Miko Lekkinen. and uh, we're gonna go into the playoffs, and we got a really good shot at the cup, and then we're gonna worry about all that. Yeah, if I'm a Canucks fan, I'm frustrated. This is a story right now, and I don't want to talk. Exactly about it. the 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 thing that the the media the narrative around it is that he's not being traded, not yet. You know, it's that hey. We don't have any indication that he wants to be here long term, so the Canucks need to look at trading Elias Pettersson eventually. And Canucks fans should look at it and say, "We got like three months." Yeah, yeah and they're the right. Play- let's let's have a playoff run, and then let's think about them trading Pettersson. Yeah. Why are we talking about this right now? In the off season, trading sure. him is absolutely on the table. Sure, but it's it's just not on the table right <laughs> no. now. Like we've, you know, as a as a fan base, uh, the, the Canucks have been first place or in and around since. Thanksgiving, like, mm-hmm. and and I do, I don't blame them for getting a little mad because it's like, can we just enjoy this? Exactly. We've had five or six years of hell. No, the answer is no. Yeah, that's the thing is when the team gets good, you actually <laughs> now you get the stress. You, you know, uh, you know uh, the term wartime leaders. Yes. Yeah, the Canucks are a wartime fan base. They they thrive in conflict. It's great. It's Last great. night wasn't great when they blew a two goal lead in the first period, and then they were up three two in the second, and then Pittsburgh comes back in the third and scores and ties it, and they uh, lose in overtime. I thought that game, and I still think it was. If Pittsburgh had lost that game, the way it was going on, especially in the first period, mm-hmm. I think that would have been it. I think the the Penguins internally saw that game as a game where it's like this is a big test. This team has a a real good shot at going deep. We need to measure ourselves against them. Mm-hmm. And in typical NHL form, they'll be like, one game. This one game decides it. If it's, and- if it's a test on the other end, then it's a test on the other end, too. If they What did they do against the Vancouver Canucks? They came back and they won against a really good team. And Thatcher Demko was probably made the best save of the game right before the goal went in. Mm-hmm. Like crazy. Those are the those worst. Are the, I hate those. Yeah. I don't like it. I don't think there's a lot to hate about the Canucks game last night, but like you don't want to blow that lead. No, and and don't I blow think any leads. I think Pittsburgh might be silly billy enough to go, you see, we still got some juice. And we're missing Gensel too. Let's not trade him either. I am fascinated to see what Cal does. Me too. Let's do the press conference quick. The presser S D P. The Steve Dangle Press Conference. Uh, before we get to a comment for Adam about Nashville, just two things I want to throw out there. The New Jersey Devils might have a early season Leafs problem where they can't really stand up for their guys and compete. Uh, there's a moment last night where it was Fabian Zetterlund who throws Siegenthaler into the boards. Uh, Nemich comes in and tries to help out, and New Jersey does the thing that Leafs tend to do is you stand around. You know, and nobody grabs a guy. Nobody comes to defend your guy. And it was a bad look. And it's been a big narrative amongst Devils fans that this team isn't, they don't have that try level that you'd like out of legit playoff teams. And there might be a problem here with Lindy Ruff. And I think there's a bigger problem with Tom Fitzgerald and the way he's constructed the roster this season. Yeah, it's, uh, well, and that's surprising because Fitzgerald was such a hard-nosed player. But Mm -hmm. yeah, that, uh, they have a lot of skill. They don't have that dog. Yeah, so that's that's missing from the Devils. And then Do you the- trade to Foley? Oh God, nobody's nobody's straight to Toronto. You I don't think anybody's Foley? taking him. To Foley? Like who's who's taking to Foley right now? <sighs> Someone I mean, with cap space and common sense. Yeah, yeah, uh, dude. Like what, that what are guy. The teams? Yeah. So so here's the thing. He's got 42 points in 58. It's 25 goals already. 
uh, if if the jet if the Devils who are what six seven points out of the playoffs right now, They're, it's not looking good. If they decide, okay, we're not we're not going, we're not going to get Markstrom, we're not going. Mm-hmm. I know that you could re-sign. I think I think Toffoli's up this year. You can re-sign him in the off season. Mm-hmm. Do you not call Vancouver and go what? Easily the funniest scenario. What would you easily? Do you want Thank Tyler you. back? I was going to say it too. And, and and what would be great about it is uh, uh, you could then undercut the Pittsburgh Penguins who are you know dangling Gensel who might be injured anyway. When you said to Foley, my initial reaction was Timo Meyer in that contract. So yeah, my bad. Oh, that's sorry, like, sorry. No, that's no problem. Yeah, no. Oh, Toffoli, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I was like because there's a lot of people who are like, upset with how uh, Timo Meyer's played this year and the giant contract that he's taken. But there's no one taking Timo Meyer. Toffoli, we yes. rolled with it. I we, think <laughs> we rolled with it. I, I think. What, is anyone trading for Tyler Toffoli? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, no. <laughs> Toffoli, like if I'm if I'm them, yeah, you sell on Toffoli. I think it's time to get assets because I don't know if they're winning anything with this kind of goaltending. But they'll be back next year, I think. If they add defensemen, yeah, like dude, Dougie dude. Hamilton going down broke them and now they can't do anything and they need a goaltender. Like, do you get Markstrom now so that you support the team next year? Well, do you they you won't they don't want to do, take his full deal. Do you do the sun and the moon for UC Soros, even though Nashville is in a playoff spot and they're not going to trade him anymore now? I don't know. Yeah. It's just that those both feel like off season moves. They do happen. Um mm. some very <laughs> consequential consequential games over the next three or four yeah. days. Does Lindy Ruff have three weeks left as a head coach of the Devils? What chant do they do now? <laughs> <laughs> They've already done Fire Lindy. You got to do a new one. Then they did Sorry Lindy, but you can't just go back to Fire Lindy. You can just Lindy. say, we were, actually, we were right. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jesse, oh, go and ahead. And then the, the other thing is, in the last 10 games that Connor McDavid has played, he leads the NHL in points. He's got 23 points. Uh, next up is Austin Matthews, who has 18 points, which is like crazy. Wow. Like they expected, you know, Austin, yep. Connor McDavid leads the NHL in points in the last 10 games. But in those 10 games, Connor McDavid has scored a total of zero goals. That's unfathomable. What the fuck is that? The NHL's <laughs> leading scorer over that time span has fewer goals over that time span than Ryan Reeves. He has and Matt Rempe. 23 assists, 23 points in 10 games Outrageous. and leads the league. You see his quote? Yeah. He's, he's like, I'm, I'm just not going to shoot. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> uh, I think they they play tonight. Um, I forget who they play, but I think that's going to be every game now that the Oilers play. It's Connor McDavid goal watch because he's snake bin. He can't score a goal. How many career points is he at? Count down to a thousand. This is from Petricor. 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 I think is how I'm going to say their Discord name. It's a question from a gas company. (laughs) They write, I know Adam might not want to admit it, but that whole U2 fiasco has seemingly galvanized this Preds team. They're putting up really strong performances, yes, against some bad teams, but we've lost to those teams this year. If you were Preds management, which three would you do? Sell assets at the deadline, try to bomb it out, mm-hmm. bottom out, hold steady and see if this team makes the playoffs. Buy. Don't see it happening, but if they keep this up this effort, management might reward them. What do you think? Okay. So I'll give the Predators credit because the last time they beat a playoff team was eight days ago, but they did win and it was against the Golden Knights. Okay. That's a big win. That's a big win. Mm-hmm. Big win. And in fact, um, where, where was it? I don't know. I don't know. I'm looking at the Google. Why? Vegas. Was it in Vegas? Okay, I don't know. Where the oh, sphere where is. Where the sphere is. So they, oh, oh, it was oh, yeah. the sphere game. Ah, I get it. Because they won the sphere game. Yeah. So then they're sketched. This is where. <laughs> That's good. This is where. This is where I think it's even funnier because they played the Kings who are floundering. They're just sinking. Mm-hmm. Then they played the Sharks. Then they played the Ducks. Then they played the Sens. If you're telling me. <laughs> If you're trying to tell me that them missing you two propelled them to victories over such gargantuan competition as the San Jose Sharks, the Ducks, and the Senators, which, by the way, they got to play within three or four days of each other. If you're t- that's a, if you're telling me that that's that's mm-hmm. the reason, then this team sucks anyway. So uh, are you last, kidding? Me? Last night, the performance against the Sens. I don't know if you saw this. Shots on goal in the third period. 
19 to 0 for the Predators. It's amazing. Holy shit. Attempts, uh, scoring chances, 37 to 2. <laughs> that performance, it, I don't know if it speaks more to what the Sens are. Well, I, think, I think it speaks a lot to both. To what? Yeah, I think it, I think it's, it's on both sides. I, the, the National Predators are playing very good hockey. They're playing good hockey, and they're a limited skill team. This is a John Tortorella special, not coached by John Tortorella. And and so, what I said remains true. Mm -hmm. This is a team with limited talent. They're going to lose games like they did. I mean, losing to the Devils kind of sucks. I get it. After the All-Star break. Um, uh, and then losing to the Stars 9-2. Yeah, that's sort of embarrassing. Uh, and then what has happened? I mean, they did beat the Blues, too, on that Saturday. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, Who so they're competing with for the spot. You can't tell me. You can't tell me that the, the U2 thing was the reason that I they were able know, to outchance the Senators. Fuck off. Sorry, I, I said I said chances um, shot attempts. Attempts. The 37 or, to 2. Or, my or, bad, my or, bad. Or, and, and listen, yeah. it's impressive. But that's Barry Trotz hockey. The Leafs mother would go over on that road. And the reason that, yeah, they would. And the reason that the Senators <laughs> lost. You know they would. And, and didn't show up is because they weren't playing the Leafs. Oh, dude. That's the, only, that's the only game they seem to be able to show up for these, these days. Yeah. Leafs, since uh, the... Um, Ridley Grigg incident, mm -hmm. seven and one. The Sens, right where the Leafs left them, twenty seventh place behind the Habs. This is what I'm saying, guys. Like I'm, listen, I get it. It's that old school. I'm gonna take your toys away or whatever. I think it kind of. If works. you're telling me that these games were not gimmies anyway for Nashville, they should have been. For the Leafs, you never know. The Leafs play down to their competition. You well still documented. have to get up out of bed for the gimmies. Well, and you know what? If they'd seen you too, they wouldn't have. Exactly. They would never, they could not have won these games were it not for the, and, and you know what? Some people were like, they should, this is the funniest. People were like, man, they should have sent them to U2 to punish them. Oh, <laughs> I guess they have some people that are not big U2 fans. <laughs> I thought that was funny. <laughs> but yeah, no, I mean, listen, good for the Preds. Again, limited upside team. Wouldn't want to play them in the playoffs. Exactly. They are, the, but the Predators to me are the Islanders of the West. If they can get in, what a pain in the ass. Ironic. Ironic. Barry Trotz? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, the Islanders are not getting in because they don't have Barry Trotz. I'm a big Barry Trotz fan, by the way. I just thought this was stupid. Still do. Yeah. The second thing that you do when your alarm goes off in the morning is get mad that your alarm woke you up. The first thing you do is wake up. <laughs> they woke up. There you go. Jesse? Ryan O'Reilly, Colton Sissons, Tommy Novak, Michael McCarron. Just as we all predicted. Playoff team. Four centers down the middle for the Nashville Predators. They bought in the summer. Like, <laughs> they <Yeah>. spent aggressively. <laughs> they think they're okay. It's wild. Well, they're I mean, Ryan O'Reilly, Barry Trotz is a match made in heaven. When oh, you yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. They're playing good hockey. Mm -hmm. Playing good hockey. We'll mm -hmm. see if it, if it keeps up. Yeah. Hey, our VIP episode is being recorded after the show as well. Don't forget to sign up. It's only a dollar a show. Actually, it's less than. because we, we, should, we should talk about Willy Wonka. What? I thought we were going to go down the Kate Middleton uh, thing. Oh, we got to talk about Kate a little Middleton? bit of Willy Wonka. I don't even know the Willy Wonka story. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W-Y-L-D-E, and at Jesse Blake. Connection complete.